Welcome to College Football Countdown, delivered by Papa John's. The Yellow Jacket marching band founded in 1908 plays us into Atlanta, where first-year head coach Jeff Collins seeks a win to continue building a new foundation at Georgia Tech. He's let it fly this season with a freshman quarterback. James Graham makes his seventh career start tonight. You have to go back to Dave Doran's first year in 2014, the last time NC State and Georgia Tech met, but Doran and the Pack have been to a bowl game every season since. That streak on the line in the final two weeks. Speaking of freshman quarterbacks, it's on Devin Leary's shoulders as he makes his fourth career start. The buzz has been building in Atlanta, but Pat, what happened here? Well, the worst kick in the history of kicking things by Buzz, the Georgia Tech mascot. Hopefully tonight goes better than this 10-foot kick, Adam. The Yellow Jackets and the Wolfpack coming up. Hope that's not a microcosm to the show as we split views. <laughs> Let there be light. Week 13 of the college football season. Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway, Matt Berry. Good seeing you guys again. What's up? I can't believe it's the week before Thanksgiving already, but here we are counting down to the final couple weeks of the regular season. We are counting down to kickoff. Jeff Collins' first season as the Georgia Tech head coach. Two and eight, not the greatest start trying to get that program implemented out there to 404. Kick off in under a half hour here on ESPN. College Football Countdown is delivered by Papa John's. New garlic and Parmesan crust one topping pizza, $10. And in part by Allstate. Reminding you that football season is mayhem. We are counting down to kick off. Freshman Devin Leary going to have to sling it tonight for that Wolf Pack against Georgia Tech. Kickoff coming up top of the hour here on ESPN. You're watching College Football Countdown. Delivered by Papa John. NC State, Georgia Tech, Jordan Mason. Seven rush touchdowns on the season. Can he continue it coming up top of the hour? Is delivered by Papa John's. New garlic and Parmesan crust one topping pizza, $10. Through the game coming up, Georgia Tech, NC State here, top of the hour. If you're two of these teams and you're struggling, which each of them is, mm -hmm. give me something to end the season on in the final couple of weeks after a season that's been a long one. From Jeff Collins, coming into Georgia Tech, knowing that you had an offense that was running option mm -hmm. and you're trying to switch over, so it was going to be a struggle for this team. So give it some time, give him a couple years to get his own recruits that are recruited to play the offense that he coaches. So it's been a struggle, but you expect him to be a team that struggled. NC State has had so many injuries to key players. This isn't the year people expected they would have, but they need to win their final two games to go to a bowl game. Their defensive line has played well this year to Tonight, got to stop the run. They have 32 sacks on the year. Got to get after James Graham. By the way, you're welcome, America. Virtual locks coming on a oh. Thursday tonight at halftime. See you then. Guys, welcome to ESPN Thursday Night College Football presented by Dave and Busters. The 404 Atlanta, Georgia is the site tonight. Cross-divisional matchup in the ACC. At Bobby Dodd Stadium is North Carolina State and Georgia Tech square off for the first time in five years. Very good jersey. Awful, awful, awful pants. Adam Amin, Matt Hasselbeck, Pat McAfee, talk to me, brother. Welcome to Atlanta where Georgia Tech plays. Used to be an option team, but today's a new day. Only got two things. Look to get things rolling. An optimistic team. They'll party till 8 in the morning. Bars. Coach Jeff Collins in his first year here at Georgia Tech is transitioning from an option team to a pro style team it's been rough they've taken their lumps but james graham at quarterback can make plays he's an athlete he's a natural thrower looking to get things rolling into a good off season of a rebuild here for the yellow jackets adam trying to snap a skid and get a big win on the other side same deal north carolina stayed on a losing streak but if they win their final two games they're going to a bowl game for a six consecutive season under mm. dave doran yeah and this is strange territory for dave doran they're used to winning nine wins each of the last two years they've got a ton of guys that are now playing in the nfl and this is just a young team they're down to their sixth or seventh corner
corner or defensive back on the defensive side of the ball and the offensive side of the ball they're two top players they're two freshman tailbacks I don't really worry at all about those tailbacks tonight I am curious about their their freshman quarterback how will he do tonight can he be the reason that they get this win earlier today Dave Dorn addressed his team about trying to get off the schneid but what we haven't shown the world yet, we showed them we'll play hard. We showed them we have resolve. We showed them we won't quit. But we haven't shown them that we could play a four-quarter game. Team football. Tonight, you're going to show them that. And you got to do your part. NC State and Georgia Tech are coming up. Kickoff from Atlanta is next. But first, a look inside Nissan's Heisman House. Welcome to the Nissan pregame rush. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. In Paul Johnson's final season, only 35 starters were used. This season, 44 starters, the second most in the country. Moments ago, Jeff Collins addressed his team. Let us coach, let us call the plays. Let us handle the referees. Let us handle the freaking scoreboard. You guys just cut it loose and play. James, offense, take care of the football. Punch that thing in body blows one play at a time and just put together drives and drives and drives. As many, as many starters. As many starters as they've used, North Carolina State has used one more, but they're two wins away from another bowl game for more down to the field than Molly McGrath. Disappointed, but still hungry. That's how quarterback Devin Leary described this NC State team after their fourth straight loss, but they didn't have long to think about it. The team was back in the facility first thing on Sunday morning to prepare for this game against Georgia Tech, and both teams are coming off of quick turnarounds, and Leary told me he doesn't mind the short week. It forces his team to focus in mentally and forces them to focus on what is really important and that is winning out and getting bowl eligibility and uh, Leary said that this team knows a bowl streak is on the line if they win their last two games they will be bowl eligible for the sixth straight year and no NC State coach has ever done that before and Dave Doran told us this is meaningful to me so the Wolfpack definitely playing for something tonight Adam thank you so much Molly this has been the Nissan pregame rush Dave Dorn, 47 years of age, the Kansas native. His team will get the ball first after, or Baker Park, Georgia Tech will get the ball first after they won the toss and deferred. We've got a nice little atmosphere here tonight, guys. Georgia Tech sidelines is already dancing. Traffic is ridiculous in this city, Pat, but people did a pretty good job of getting here early. I mean, you, you can't get anywhere in this city in under 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm pumped for the crowd we have, and I think we're going to have a very good game this evening here in Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia Tech actually opened up the week as a slight favorite. North Carolina State comes into the game as a slight favorite tonight. Wanye Thomas, who's had two kick return touchdowns in his career. Will take it out across the 25, get hit near the 30 with the ball out near the end of the play. Ball was juggled. There is a penalty flag thrown late as well near the 20-yard line. So a lot to sort out right out of the gates. That ball came out, obviously, and the ref threw the flag down there. I wonder if maybe it was for pulling somebody off a pile. Gary Patterson is our lead official. Really good microphone here early. Solid, solid. There's no noise coming from his microphone to anybody. It's not just you at home. <laughs> it is <laughs> North Georgia Tech football. But we know it's a first down, guys. We know <laughs> yeah, it's a first exactly. down. Uh, Matt, you were talking to me about James Graham. Really good athlete, outstanding track star in high school. How does that help him tonight in his seventh career start? Yeah, listen, the coaches said he's been the best athlete on the field ever since he was a little kid. And I said, you know, I don't think that's different any, even now. 110-meter hurdle champ, track star. I know he's a great runner. I'd like to see how accurate he can be throwing the ball today. He's got a live arm. Pat said in the open, he's got a natural arm. That means he's got a, he's got, he does it effortlessly. 
Got a chance to see it right out of the chute. Taking a shot for Malachi Carter. You bet. All the way down inside the 20 yard line. Coach Jeff Collins said, we're going to take our shots. We like the way James can throw the ball. In early, first play of the game, he drops a dime 54 yards in the first time. Longest career catch for Carter. Just shy of a career-long toss for Graham. Immediately into the red zone where Georgia Tech has been well below par this season. Jordan Mason gets wrapped up by Brock Miller. That'll be a loss of a yard for the Georgia Tech running back. Guys, 47% touchdown rate in the red zone. One of the worst marks in the country for Georgia Tech this year. Yeah, but a great start for these guys. They said they wanted to test the young DBs of NC State early. We mentioned that Pat said in the open, this quarterback's got a live arm, and I said they're down to their sixth or seventh defensive back. Quite a good matchup to the end zone, trying to take advantage of those defensive backs, and a connection was it in bounds. Amarion Brown, touchdown, his sixth as a freshman for Tech. Just a beautiful ball by James Graham here. First play, 54-yard dime. Now, two plays later, drops one where only his receiver can catch it. This guy who's a natural thrower, who Jeff Collins has all the faith in the world in, makes a heck of a throw here early. Gary Patterson, who doesn't have a microphone, is going to get some eyes on that thing for a review. It's a good point. And with the young secondary guys, how that translates, not only are they young, know that you're going to get simple cover get cover, cover, cover three today, today. Maybe, maybe a little cover one cover three is zone cover one is man but they're all the players are in the exact same spots so when you call these plays you know where the guys are going to be and I think that's a touchdown I think so too I think his right foot was down before that left foot stepped out of bounds I mean who knows after review especially this year in both college and the NFL Amarian Brown though is a guy that the NC State Wolfpack defensive coordinator Huxtable said we have to look for and for the Georgia Tech they said we got to get this guy going he's young he's a freshman he's explosive and he's working on his route running just like Tyreek Hill trying to read and study him to become an explosive player it's a totter I believe Gary Patterson did come out, put his arms up over his head to indicate that, as you guys accurately pointed out, a foot was down with possession before the next foot went out of bounds. Nice job by the security man on the sidelines to stay strong. Oh, this is Atlanta. Brenton King is on for the extra point. And a great start for an offense that needed a shot in the arm. Georgia Tech was shut out a week ago. First time since 1997 that Georgia Tech was shut out. First time since the 1950s they got shut out at home. What a start for Amarian Brown, James Graham, and this Georgia Tech lineup. And when you're compared to Calvin Johnson as a true freshman, pretty good. Well, the similarities are in the touchdowns, but that's about it. Check out the difference in height and weight. It's absolutely ridiculous. And when you talk about the great receivers of all time, Calvin Johnson has got to be one of the first guys you think about. A difference maker, a game changer. And that's what they think they found in Brown, the young freshman. Yeah, I mean, Megatron deserves to get that money from Detroit Lions, obviously. But <laughs> he changed the game when he was in there. And Amarian Brown is doing the same thing. Different build, different style of wide receiver. Still same results, making big time plays. And this Georgia Tech team, only two wins this year. Talked to Coach Collins yesterday. Relentlessly positive is what they say. They feel like they're in everything. And I would be positive considering last week they had five three and outs to start the game. They got that touchdown, Matt, on three plays. Very impressive. Well, you know about the pedigree of the NFL quarterbacks. Not the same pedigree right now as Jacoby Brissett's not here. Ryan Finley's not here. It's up to a bunch of guys that were stepping in for their first career starts this season. Yeah, and the current guy, they're riding the wave right now with Devin Leary. He's the red shirt freshman. He's the one with the big arm. And they're going to just take their lumps right now. They're hoping that the growing pains that they go through this year with the young quarterback will someday, you know, they'll see the fruits of this labor. But I wouldn't be totally shocked to see two quarterbacks at some point tonight. We'll start with a handoff to Bam Knight. 
Zonovan Knight, one of the young trio of freshman running backs. That was a kind of a redundant thing to say, but this is one of the young guys that needs to step up and has been most of the season. I think he's the guy that they cannot afford to lose tonight. He does it all. He's kind of their workhorse. He carries the load. He's a smart player. And to, to be a freshman and play the kind of football that these young freshman running backs have played in the ACC this year is very impressive to me. Picks up 11 on the first play of the game. There it is, right back tonight, another first down run as he takes it into Georgia Tech territory. No surprise, right on cue, impact player Zonovan Knight picks up 16 yards. Yeah, Zonovan Knight and Devin Carter, two guys that are going to have to make plays tonight, especially with the young quarterback in Devin Leary. Matt just said he's the workhorse. That's going to happen when you have a young quarterback because you take the weight off the quarterback's shoulders. And Devin Carter, you guys, he's a bigger receiver. Just another guy. He's a redshirt freshman. Kerry Angeline is there. The tight end makes the grab at the 43, picking up six yards. And this, this quarterback situation for NC State, Devin Leary mentioned live arm, but just such a low percentage of completed passes. So I'm thinking if that's how you come into the game, knowing that you're trying to have a higher completion percentage, the tight end's got to be a part of that. Only 47% completion rate on the season for Leary. Right back tonight, and he won't get a whole lot. It's going to set up third down and medium. Brentavius Glanton in the mix for Georgia Tech's front. NC State has been bitten by the turnover bug here lately, too. So possessing the ball is a big deal for this one. And I would say, Pat, this is probably two down territory because you're kind of in no man's land here. And I think Bam Knight might have lost his shoe. They're trying to get a late substitution here. We're bringing Ricky Person, who just returned from injury. After missing four games, he played against Louisville last week in the loss. Devin Leary trying to escape the pocket and just got grabbed by Jordan Dominic. Barely shy of the line to gain. So now, as Matt was saying, could be two down territory. We'll see if the offense stays out there. And a nice job by Devin Leary. He didn't have anything downfield. Instead of throwing it away, he was able to get up inside the pocket, gain some yards, and give Coach Dave Doran a fourth and one. Need two wins to get bowl eligible. Coach Doran would be the first coach in NC State history to go to six straight. Fourth and one, first drive of the game. Gotta go for it. Get the big bodies in there. Fourth down and a long one. They go with the sneak with Leary. His six foot two body is able to extend forward for about two and a half, and that'll move the chains. And guys, the first thing that jumps out at you when you look at this Georgia Tech defense is how small their defensive line is. They ran the triple option here for the last 11 years. It's hard to recruit big D linemen to come to a school where you know you're going to get cut block every day in practice. That's part of this turnover also for Jeff Collins and Georgia Tech, getting more physical up front. Last week gave up 461 yards to Virginia Tech. He'll swing it out for Jordan Houston, another freshman with speed. Into the red zone goes North Carolina State. Devin Leary dropped one off to the tight end earlier. Now it's a little wheel route to the running back where he puts in a perfect position to let Houston run the ball for an 18-yard here outside. And it's just an extension of the running game. That's an 18-yard run to these guys up front. Nice play call. Right back to the ground in Houston. Able to bounce off the initial tackle from Charlie Thomas and dive ahead to the 13. This D line is undersized. Coach Collins yesterday said that it was hard to recruit D linemen here whenever they're running the option because all year they were getting cut blocks from the offensive line at Georgia Tech. So now in this transition phase, they're trying to get bigger bodies in there. You can see the run game for NC State kind of taking advantage of that. And because they're so nervous about stopping the run inside, they're leaving one on one coverage up top to Emeki, Emeka Amezi. Looking in that direction, Matt. Looking for Amezi. Separation, the catch, and incomplete is the ruling. Trey Swilling was in on the coverage, number three against number three. Well, Amezi doesn't do a good job of kind of holding his stem. He allows Swilling to push him kind of to the sideline and use that out of bounds line as an extra defender. The throw kind of leads him that way, but a missed opportunity 
Now, although the D-line for Georgia Tech is kind of undersized, the secondary are a tall group. That was great defense by the corner. Getting him out of bounds so he couldn't get a foot down. And even though they're undersized up front, I feel like they've got good energy, Pat. Juice. Devin Leary on third down. Goes underneath, and Charlie Thomas with a stick on Emeka Imezi, two yards short of the line to gain. Charlie Thomas, one of the best tacklers for this team. Yeah, nice play defensively. I wish Devin Leary would have been a little more patient and gotten through his progression. He had five eligible receivers there. He went one, two, three, and delivered the ball. Number four would have been open. So, guys, Molly McGrath reported to us earlier tonight before the game that Christopher Dunn, their outstanding kicker, was tightening up a little bit. He was ready to go on the field earlier tonight. What can you tell us, Mom? Dunn strained his back in pregame warm-ups. He had a heating pad on his lower back. He was warming up on the bike. I saw him tell a teammate, I hurt my back, but I'm good. That might be why they're going wildcat with Zonovan Knight on fourth down and two. And he gets stopped shy. Georgia Tech and Jordan Dominic with the stop. That is a huge stop for Georgia Tech. That play had no chance to be successful. What a start for Georgia Tech. They were terrible last week and equally impressive this week so far tonight. Hey team, let's look at tonight's quick delivery brought to you by DoorDash. I'm not sure how much quicker you can get. First play from scrimmage for James Graham, a 54 yard dime to get things rolling for Georgia Tech. Two plays later, they score a touchdown. It's been a hot start for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Uh, zone read from James Graham. There's some of the athleticism Matt was talking about. He picks up six on the ground. And I think that's the balance for Georgia Tech. They want to become a passing program, but the strength of their quarterback, he's been a great runner. Finding that balance in terms of passing game and the running game, it's got to be a challenge. They'll try to pass here for Carter again, and a little bit underthrown, incomplete. Coverage from Devon Graves, one of those young defensive backs. And you see NC State's concerned about the run, but if that ball is delivered, there's no safety in the middle of the field. That might have been another quick delivery by DoorDash. <laughs> another DoorDash. DoorDash. DoorDash loving this, this matchup right now. Genius concept, by the way. I said it home. Food comes to me. You should see my receipts from DoorDash. It is extensive. Oh, yeah. Nice cut by Jordan Mason. And he's going to work back to the 18-yard line. Third down and about three coming up. Fourth down and three, back your partner. This is my guy now. My guy. Impact player tonight. Georgia Tech's punter, Presley Harvin. Six foot tall, 245. Can squat over 500 pounds if he wants to. He's been a weapon for this team. Hits big balls. Near 250 pounder from South Carolina. Wow. That is a big ball. Thayer Thomas with a fair catch. 48 yard kick, nicely done by Harvin, a second team All ACC selection last year. 7 0 Tech in Atlanta. ESPN Thursday Night College Football is presented by Dave and Busters. Download the new Dave and Busters Fun app today and in part by AT&T. Uh, impressive showing in the belly flop competition back in Waco, Texas earlier this week from one Pat McAfee. I appreciate that. You know, sometimes you just got to let that thing swing a little bit. Pat, let's look at this right here. You can't wuss out on television, especially national television. Very aggressive toughness. Very impressive. <laughs> You did know your mic was on, though. You were like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I was very scared. That's good for the brand. That bolo tie almost caved in my chest. 40 flicker. Here it comes. It'll be Leary firing to Amezi, but out of bounds. And that'll be second down coming up. North Carolina State continuing the Eli Drinkwitz run of trick plays with new offensive coordinators George McDonald and Des Kitchings. How dare they run a trick play flea flicker while I'm trying to break down Pat McAfee's <laughs> college game day at Baylor belly flop. But that's the thing I love about NC State. Watching these guys over the years, trick plays are coming. Whether they work or not, they're going to keep swinging. Empty it out on second down into traffic. Good catch by Thayer Thomas. 
And two defenders wrapped up on him for six. The thing about the trick play is the defense has to prepare for that. They do it on a very regular occasion. Although they're over the last three, it still makes the Georgia Tech defense have to be on their heels a little. Bit. And Bayer Thomas, we saw it when we had North Carolina State against Syracuse. He has a touchdown pass on a double pass this year. Well, we asked these coaches, we said, hey, which one of your guys is good at throwing the ball? Which one of your receivers, running backs? And they looked at us like we were crazy. They were like, all of them. We practice it every day in practice. We have a pra we have a session in practice just for trick plays, shot plays. Third down and four, nothing downfield. So Leary's going to tuck it and take a smack from David Curry. Excellent inside linebacker, their leading tackler. But it's going to be just enough for the first down after they take a look at the measurement. He did a lot of that last week versus Louisville. Tough kid from Jersey. Lowers the shoulder and makes it happen. Matt, you got to appreciate that. Yeah, I do. And it was a pretty generous spot, I thought. Pretty physical play by the young quarterback, though. Leary's got one on one, looking for Devin Carter. And incomplete. He had Samari Walton, a redshirt freshman in coverage. Yeah, and Walton goes inside. You need to take an outside release if you can. And he doesn't get the outside release. And still, the quarterback throws the ball there. Is that a yin and still a yan thing, or yeah, is that pretty a much it? Yeah. Well, and sometimes when your when your receiver is so much taller, Carter is very tall. You want to throw him up and give him the chance, but he didn't do either one of those things. On second down, they'll find Carter right near midfield. Charlie Thomas and Samari Walton are there for the stop after a seven-yard gain. Third down and a makeable three coming. And you notice the substitutions for Georgia Tech. Jeff Collins talked about just rifling guys through. We're going to play eight different people up front. I want so many different people playing so that we're fresh. 25 to 29 players he'd like to rotate on defense. You got single coverage outside again. Leary stands in the pocket but delivers off target for Imezi with swilling and coverage. I kind of like this matchup tonight, guys. Number three on number three. Imezi is a good receiver. He gets the outside release. This ball, well, he gets held there just a little bit. He was looking for the flag. I think he probably deserved one. Eh. Let the boys play out there. Trey Swilling, one of the Big names in Georgia Tech. Of course, his dad, Pat, one of the all-time great players in Georgia Tech history. Outstanding defensive lineman. Booted away. Amarian Brown is back. And uh, fair catch is signal. Perfect. 40-yard punt to pit him right near the 10. Well, Pat, Georgia Tech was the site of the 96 Summer Olympic Games for swimming and diving. Who better than Georgia <laughs> Tech's Olympic gold medal winning coaches and athletes well, to break it down? Good attempt, Pat. I give it a six and a half. You had it going really well, but right at the end, you brought your arms forward to soften the impact a little bit. You know what, Pat? I could see a lot of energy behind that, and I really saw the passion come through on that jump, so I'm going to give you a 10. All right, Pat, I'm going to give you a five, and we're going to show you how Georgia Tech diver does it, freshman Ruben Lechuga. <laughs> uh, this seemed a little bit more formed. Uh, with a little bit more form, I think. That's Patrick. a different dive. I could have done that. It was full of water. What do you want from me? I appreciate them obviously judging that. Uh, but I'm not winning any Olympic gold medals, although I could possibly win a beer Olympics with that. By the way, you can tune into the Georgia Tech Invitational starting tomorrow at 10 a.m. through Sunday on the ACC Network Extra channel. Ooh, I like the ACC Network. How about that synergy? Yeah, hashtag, we do this. Nicely done, gentlemen. You know what the refs do? They all throw a flag. <laughs> they all do that. You got to get this man a new mic, by the way. And guys, you know why Georgia Tech jumped. This is something that NC State does. Actually, both defensive lines do that in this game. They stem. They're stemming right before the snap. They're given like a move, like a move call real quick. And sometimes those offensive linemen, it causes them to jump. They get the quarterback's calls confused with the middle linebacker's calls. Really got to focus in up front, especially tonight. Rotate Jerry Howard into the backfield, junior out of South Carolina, next to James Graham. Plenty of time and just a three-man rush, but time's running out. Finally run down by Deontay Holden at the 12-yard line. It ends up being a gain of a couple yards. 
This is just a three-man rush. Pat, you like to talk about it, the 3-3-5 three, three, defense. Holden gets upfield and just stays with that pursuit. He retraces his steps. The quarterback's holding onto the ball because they're dropping eight in coverage, and they're able to get a sack with just a three-man rush. I think James Graham could have scooted out of there a little bit earlier. He'll put that in the old memory bank for later. Key play by Holden. James Smith Williams, their excellent defensive end, is like is uh, out after he suffered what was a likely concussion last week against Louisville. Here comes Mason. Still has to find the yardage and does. Gets across the 20 with that second surge. 10 yard run for a first down. And that's something unusual you're going to see tonight out of Georgia Tech. Third and eight, third and nine, stuff like that. They're going to run the football and they're going to give it to Jordan Mason most times. He's their workhorse. He's the most physical guy. And they're, one of their missions tonight is to feed him the ball. Mason over 700 yards, seven touchdowns to lead Georgia Tech this season. Right back to him with a big hole. Mason slips free in the Wolfpack territory, down near the 30-yard line. yards boys well we mentioned they wanted to feed him and they're going to do it multiple ways this time with a pulling offensive lineman a pulling tight end it's called a gap scheme you split the defense in half and jordan mason does the rest but explosive plays tonight have been impressive mostly because last week they had nothing to show isaiah moore already part of a depleted defense is down to the deck after that career long run 48 yards by mason You're watching the ACC on ESPN from this great campus in Atlanta, Georgia Tech. Of course, Clemson, college football playoff participant, two-time champ during the playoff era. They have already clinched a spot in the ACC title game. Could be Virginia, Virginia Tech, or Pitt on the other side representing the Coastal. Graham firing over the middle for Carter again. Second time they've connected for a big gainer to set him up near the 10. Really nice play. It's a 20-yard gain, and this ball should be caught about 19 yards. Cross the, cross the defender's face. Malachi Carter does it perfectly in an excellent throw. Hey, James Graham drops back in rhythm, delivers the rock. Pro-style passing offense is really doing well here. Does he look natural to you based on what you thought early, Pat? Hey, natural thrower. Effortless. Right in oh, that boy. read, but he lost the football, and for the first time in ACC play, North Carolina State has a takeaway. Laurel Murchison, their stud up front on top of it. Ibrahim Conte knocked it loose. Well, there was a shift by the defense right before that, and I think it might have caused a little bit of confusion as to who was supposed to block who. The defender comes in untouched. It causes the fumble. That is a big play for NC State. We talked to the NC State coaches last night, and they knew that they hadn't had turnovers in forever. They said, we think we're going to get one because we're going to bring some pressure. There's one, bang, right in the first quarter. Get that monkey off the back. Now they start this drive from the 15, and there's David Curry with a great wrap-up tackle on Van Knight. NC State was 130 out of 130 teams in turnovers. And they got unlucky. The balls have been on the ground. They've been taking big shots, couldn't get the rock. And what did we say? What did they say to us when we asked them about it? They said, you know what? This is how we practice. We club, we punch, we rip. It's going to come. It's going to happen. We hope it happens Thursday night. They got one already. This time, Ricky Person with nothing there, and the Georgia Tech defense able to stand. Quez Jackson, the sophomore, for a loss of five. This Georgia Tech team talks about swarming on the internet. Their yellow jackets, obviously, they swarm. The D-line does that right there. You got four guys in the frame. Big time stop to make this third and forever. It's third and forever, and it's backed up near the student section, where it's obviously much louder here in this stadium. These defensive ends love that crowd noise for their pass rush. They clock down to three. Hand it off, nothing there. Jordan Dominic this time with the stop. 
and, and I do not understand that play call whatsoever unless you're just afraid that you can't protect the passer. That was one of those over there where they line up in the formation, they look to the sideline for the play, they look back, they look to the sideline. You had all that time, and that's the play you come up with. Very confusing. Coach Jeff Collins at Georgia Tech, he focuses on special teams. They love special teams, going to build this team around it. They had a punt block in this area against Pitt earlier in the year. Georgia Tech's got three blocks, two on punts. They practice it every single day. Blocking kicks, rushing kicks. Uh, good pressure that time, nearly got to the punter Trenton Gill, and it's grabbed by Brown near midfield. Great field position coming for Georgia Tech. Their defense stands strong. Their offense already putting them in the lead. Duke and Wake Forest. You'll hear Tim Hasselbeck, Dave O'Brien, Kitty George on the call on the ACC Network on Saturday night. Yeah, Wake Forest looking for their eighth win. They're doing it without their wide receiver, Sage Surratt, there. Another big run for Jordan Mason. This guy's been carving it up in the early going. And he takes Georgia Tech to the 25-yard line with a 25-yard run. Probably going to be the end of the quarter. That's the run up fast. They've done it through the air. They've done it on the ground. Jordan Mason's been picking up valuable yards for him. Try to get a playoff before the end of the quarter. Right back to Mason. And another good second effort gives him two yards to take us to the end of the opening period. 86 yards for Jordan Mason in that opening quarter. And a big play to Carter. Set up the touchdown to Brown. 7 0 Georgia Tech. Well, we talked with. Jeff Collins, and if you look at his Twitter profile, the pinned tweet is a photo of him hanging out at Waffle House. The Waffle House CEO is a Georgia Tech grad, and Jeff Collins has made it a place where Georgia Tech football is celebrated. The 404 takeover continuing at Waffle House. Gold-blooded, another hashtag. It's been coined by uh, a self-proclaimed Twitter master in Jeff Collins. And he told us his first day at Waffle House he saw his left tackle, Zach Quinney, there with an egg white omelet. He said, listen, man, why are you having an egg white omelet? He's like, well, coach, you know, trying to keep my weight down. You know, uh, last year, if I was over 270 pounds, I'd get in trouble. If I was under 270 pounds, uh, sorry, if I was over 270 pounds, I'd get in trouble. So, and, and Coach Collins was like, listen, no more egg white omelets. He made a rule for the entire team. <laughs> no more egg white omelets at Waffle House. By the way, if you're ordering egg white omelets at Waffle House, I have to question a lot more about you than just your weight anyways. Fourth down and one. Georgia Tech staying out there. What a move by Graham. He picks up the first down. Sidestep Tanner Ingle, the leading North Carolina State tackler, and picked up the first. And this is a great play by Graham because Tanner Ingle is one of the best tacklers on the team. They go with the zone read. Tanner Ingle was ready for it. He just was a little bit too aggressive, and Graham with a great play. He hit him with that R1, that little whoop. That was a little Chris Berman, too. Whoop. ESPN Plus. A little promo there. Graham on the rollout. Slings it to the end zone. It is caught. Tobias Oliver, the former quarterback, with the touchdown. The first reception for a touchdown in his career. Tobias Oliver started two of the first four games this year at quarterback. Had a start last year under center in the triple option. His athleticism got him moved to wide receiver. And for the first time, he cashes in with a catch for a score. This offense has been incredibly balanced. Well, guys, last week they had 134 yards against Virginia Tech. They're over 200 yards in the first half. I am so impressed by this play right here by James Graham on the run. And then he follows it up with an even better pass. Quarterback to quarterback love with a great start for Georgia Tech. 45 nothing loss against Virginia Tech last week. First time they've been shut out since 1997. And first time since 1957 that Georgia Tech had been shut out in a home game. Already, their offense off to an outstanding start compared to where they were a week ago against a potential division champion in Virginia Tech. Yeah, a week ago, it was the Presley Harvin show with all the punts. 
Five three and outs to start the game. Tonight, though, it's quarterback James Graham. He's been outstanding. Tanner Ingle will bring it out. They don't have Keyshawn Lassane tonight. He's out with an injury, so Ingle handling some kickoff duties. We'll take it out near the 25-yard line. So Georgia Tech's defense back out onto the field. So we got a look at tonight's PlayStation player impact rating, and we look at the sophomore from Thomasville, Georgia, Charlie Thomas, the second leading tackler for the Yellow Jackets. Look at the difference on third down when he's on the field compared to when he's off. His PlayStation impact rating, 91 out of 100. 69% there. Pretty impressive. I save him for third down there. 36% to 69. That's what we like to call a bump in production. How about the pressure from Brentavius Glanton? He leapt over an offensive lineman to pursue the quarterback. Well, when you go with a three-step drop, a lot of the time, the offensive line will know, hey, that's okay where I can go with a cut block. You can kind of mix it up on the pass rush. So the cut block happens, but then... At that point, the quarterback, Devin Leary in this case, you gotta get rid of the ball. There's the cut block, and why you love the cut block on a three-step drop is because the defense doesn't get their hands up. No batted balls at the line of scrimmage. Gotta get the ball up with them. Exactly. Leary is gonna escape the pocket and deliver to Carter across the 30 to set up a makeable third down. And I've been really impressed with Carter, the redshirt freshman wide receiver. We had NC State earlier in the year. I watched him then, been watching tape this week, watching now. He's a guy that has gotten a lot better as the year's gone on. Remember, C.J. Riley, who is their best returning receiver, had an ACL injury for the second time in four years early in the season, so they've had to fill in gaps at wide receiver. This is after losing a pair of all ACC performers from last year, Jacoby Myers and Calvin Harmon, both in the NFL. Leary on third down, incomplete. Looking for Carter, and it was broken up by Avery Showell, the redshirt sophomore from Atlanta. But Georgia Tech calls it the money down. Third down is where you earn your money. You want to win games, you got to earn this down. It's not a terrible throw by Devin Leary, but a great play by Georgia Tech, and so that is the second straight three and out for it's, NC State. It's not easy as a corner or a safety to break on the ball and not get a little handsy on that backside. Breaks up the pass, causes the fourth down, get the ball back into your hot offense's hands. Amarion Brown back to return. Haven't had a punt return touchdown at Georgia Tech in 10 years. Won't be on this one. Fair catch after a 41-yard kick by Gill. As we get a look back at our Enterprise Drive recap, great start for Georgia Tech and in particular, Jordan Mason, their running back, who's already nearing 100 yards. Yeah, and we said they got to feed him tonight. That was the plan, and they've done it. NC State was looking for that. Graham has the keeper on the zone read to keep him off balance. And then we mentioned quarterback to former quarterback in Tobias Oliver for the touchdown. Can't say enough about how Georgia Tech has started tonight. By former quarterback, I mean this year. This <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not like high school or Pop Warner. This year. Now James Graham, the current QB, wanted to take a shot for Malachi Carter. Carter was out near the 50-yard line. And they went with a double move there, meaning like a hitch and go or a curl and go. And the quarterback threw the hitch and go. The wide receiver said, hey, the defensive back is so far off, I'm not going to bother even trying. A little miscommunication, but I like the aggressiveness. And I don't think it's a surprise that they're continuing to go at number 24, Malik Dunlap. He's a redshirt freshman. He's playing way too early because they're so banged up in the secondary. He's being forced out there. He's doing the best that he can. Dunlap was the seventh string corner when the season began. They run it with Jamias Griffin, the true freshman from Rome, Georgia, former North Carolina State commit, will pick up a couple. And I think what was interesting about our talk with Dave Dorn yesterday, and he sold me on this. He looked us square in the eyes and he said, you know what, guys? Because these young players are playing right now way before they're ready, this is going to pay off a year or two from now, and we're going to have an outstanding team because of it. Yeah, the, when you get thrown in the deep end, you learn how to swim. Or? Or when you're forced to dive? Yeah, or you can drown. <laughs> it's four feet deep. <laughs> we got another money down, just like it is for the defense, it is for the offense as well. On third down and eight. Graham takes off. 
weaving his way towards the sticks, and he's down for a first down at the 40-yard line. See, I think in the first quarter, he sat back. He saw that there was eight people dropped in protection, and he held on to it a little bit too long, took the tackle. This time, as soon as he saw space, as soon as he saw opportunity, he took it, picked up a big first down on third down. Matt, you talked about it right at the top. You thought that James Graham could use his legs with this defense in the 3-3-5 backing off. Yeah, when they rush three, that means they're dropping eight. It's very, very hard to find a place to go with the ball unless you yourself are in an empty backfield set. So that means if he's got a running back standing next to him while he's in shotgun, and they're only rushing three, it's gonna be hard to find somewhere to throw it. He might have to use his legs. And he can. Very well. Oh, this is not good for the NC State defense. Jordan Mason picked up a couple, and now Drake Thomas, who has started the last three games at middle linebacker with that depleted defense, he's banged up. ESPN Thursday Night College Football brought to you by the Lexus December to Remember sales event. Offers available for a limited time. Some of the service that Georgia Tech gets involved with. Great to see that. Jeff Collins has been preaching that. On the other side, Drake Thomas, inside linebacker. Another big name, important name to add to the injury woes for this team. We mentioned it to you at the top. The North Carolina State Wolfpack have used 45 different starters. That's the most of the Power Five. Georgia Tech has 44 starters this year. You see the number of freshmen that North Carolina State has played this year, too. It has been tough on the defensive end. We'll get the stop here. No gain on the play for Jordan Mason. And a, so Isaiah Moore backing off. And some of the players, including Tanner Ingle, getting into it with Georgia Tech's leading back. I like the little scuffle there, bring a little energy. Coach Doran would not make the excuse, but they're still two games away from being bowl eligible with all these injuries. You've got to give credit to the coaching staff. I really enjoyed our time with both of these coaching staffs. Thought this would be a good game tonight so far. It has been a huge third down here. Blitz from North Carolina State. They tried to find a Donica Sanders. Good coverage by Malik Dunlap, somebody you thought that they would go after tonight. And they are going after him, and he's holding his own just, you know, most of the time. He's given up two good deep balls tonight. This one, he again, uses the sideline as an extra defender. So even if this ball had been caught, it would have been caught out of bounds. And that's what you teach a young secondary player to do when he's one-on-one -on -one like that on an island. Please be quiet. A guy's about to bomb a football. <laughs> what do you think of this one, McAfee? Beautiful. Absolutely stupendous. Presley Harvin, Harvin an absolute stud punter, downs it inside the five for the Georgia Tech punch team. Why do you like Pat, uh, this guy so much, and among he's, many reasons? He's a powerhouse, he hits big balls, six foot, 245, here's him squatting, 465. I talked to him in pregame, I said, that seemed like light work to you. He said, I can go over 500, no big deal. He puts in the work, and it comes to fruition here. He hits big, big balls, and he has a great arm, he's a great athlete, and Coach Collins likes using it, he threw one against Miami. And that was a, that his fake punt for a touchdown was one of the prettier passes I've seen in college football this year. He's great for the brain. He's going to be good in the league, too, I think. Zonovan Knight. Good run on first down as he gives North Carolina State some cushion. So this was a game, only the second win of the year. This was the last win, in fact, for Georgia Tech, October the 19th. And this is a game where they had a defensive touchdown <laughs> and a punt, big punt for a touchdown right there from Harvin. That's how they generated most of their offense in an overtime win. Pat is so happy right now. Look, the smile He's beaming, on his face. beaming. It lights up Bobby Dodd Stadium. He's so happy. Well, Bobby Dodd, also a punter. So that's anytime right. you see a punter do good things, especially in a stadium that's named after a punter. But Presley Harvin is a weapon for this Georgia Tech team. When your offense can't really go, which they have tonight, but this season they haven't, if you have a punter that can control field position it's a real weapon and coach Collins says Presley has been exactly that he has a great attitude as well and that was a great punt pinned him inside the five yard line but sneakily Bam Knight is just running this ball right down the middle and has them right out of the minus territory We're down and one coming up guys Pat to your point of course the great Bobby Dodd the namesake of this stadium 1945 to 1966 of course led them to one of their four national titles in 1952 served Georgia Tech for almost six decades in other roles 165 wins and would teach guys how to punt his drop was a little rough there but I <laughs> love what Bobby Dodd's doing I like that they show a little respect to the guy heck of a coach heck of a punter 
And now Devin Leary picks up the first down, guys. Got a program building here in the transition phase of Georgia Tech. This NC State offense now, they've struggled a little bit. He backed up at the four, which is the punter's job. They've marched it right out here, which is massive for this team to get some momentum going. And that's the second consecutive quarterback sneak that's been successful. Seems to be their short yardage play of choice tonight. Got that tough New Jersey kid. Leary out of Timber Creek High School in Sicklerville, two-time Gatorade Player of the Year in the state. And Mezzi on the comeback route right in front of Swilling will pick up a few yards. Devin Leary in his seventh career game. He started the last four games now after he debuted against Florida State on the road. Bailey Hockman had some run in that game. Even that game, though, was started by Matthew McKay. Leary's the third different quarterback to start a game this season after Ryan Finley had started 39 in his career for NC State. And all these quarterbacks have different things that they're good at, but they're all good at handing the ball off to Bam Knight. This guy's a good runner. I mentioned earlier, he's the one guy they can't afford to lose. He's their, he's kind of their guy that does it all. The offensive line, they're young, they like to fire off the ball. If you can run inside zone for a 20-yard gain, that was 19, but if you can get it for those big explosive gains, that's exactly what you're looking for out of your running game. It helps everything else go. Right back to Knight, got chased down by TK Chemenza at the 43 another seven yard run for bam knight this drive has been a lot of that it's almost like they saw something on the sideline and said hey bam's making some big time plays for us let's get it behind the big boys and let's start running the rock a little bit and it's hard not to notice jeff collins subbing out like a, almost like a hockey line substitution after every play they're very much into the analytics of how much load management guys are getting on both sides of the ball second down they'll move the chains Good run from Jordan Houston, another freshman from Maryland. Yeah, nobody's a starter, nobody's a backup. You're either above the line, which means you have playing time, or you're not above the line yet. So they bring in a lot of players. They utilize this catapult thing. Both teams do, but you put it on the jersey, see the work management, the workload, try to keep everybody fresh. Leary on the keep. A run down by Curry. Maybe two yards on the play two and a half it's only a two-yard gain but it would have been a three-yard loss had he not pulled it they had pressure coming off the edge that time georgia tech did they said hey enough's enough we're attacking in the backfield on that runner nice call on the zone read nice job by Devin leary keeping it houston running into zamari walton Jordan Houston out of Waldorf, Maryland. He was actually recruited to Temple by Jeff Collins. Ended up signing with North Carolina State and now faces Collins in this game tonight for the first time. And guys, normally I wouldn't say that this is two down territory here, but with the injury in pregame to NC State's kicker, this very well may be two down territory also. So they'll keep it on the ground, and they'll get the first down with Houston. That's maybe a touchdown-saving tackle out on the perimeter by Jalen King. He looks a lot like Eckler from the L.A. Chargers. Kind of undersized, but he has a good burst. Houston's been giving them good spurts there. Here he bounces it outside, gets the edge, picks up a big first down for the NC State. Yeah, he's quick, and he's a great pass catcher. We brought him up to Jeff Collins, and Jeff Collins said, I know all about that guy. Pat, you mentioned when Jeff Collins was at Temple, he was trying to recruit Jordan Houston. He says he knows him well. He was at him, but nonetheless. Boy, Houston runs into one of the officials. Hey. Ran into the umpire. Not to say that he would have had the touchdown, but that was certainly a roadblock in the way. The um <laughs> that was a heck of a stop by Terrence Ramsey, the umpire. It is a heck of a stop. <laughs> hey, that's a tough place to be. It is. <laughs> you got to stand on the tracks with the trains coming. I think Jeff Collins would say that that particular ref is above the line. <laughs> <laughs> he can play games for the other Jackets. Right back to Houston, try to turn up the middle. It'll be maybe a yard and a half shy of the line to gain. Got a so, little late pancake yeah. for number 79. That, that was the left tackle, Ekam Ekwanu, the true freshman. And that, that is what Jeff, Jeff Collins is talking about. Away from the play, Ekwanu just kind of pancaked yeah. well away well, from the play as defender. Jeff Collins likes pancakes, but only the kind at Waffle House. He's not a fan of that one. I, I see what you did. Thank you. Thank you. 
404 the culture money down third and two they bring in Ricky person the veteran back when I say veteran he's a sophomore <laughs> in a group of freshmen and it looked like he had the forward progress to the five first down North Carolina State first and goal coming up for the pack Ricky Person had the left leg injury earlier this season against Florida State. That might have been a little bit of a generous spot there. Might have been enough for a first down either way, but certainly an extra yard to the five. Well, you said he got to the five. I don't think he got to the five. It might have been a first down, but impossible to tell with that angle. Stick with Person in the backfield. Swing it out to a Mezzi. Excellent open field tackle by Christian Campbell, the former linebacker. This is an excellent play by Campbell, the fifth-year senior. They try to run a little pick play. Campbell recognizes it and gets off of the same level as his other defender, gets around the pick, makes a huge stop. Excellent play by the fifth-year senior. This drive has been 16 plays thus far. NC State has needed this at the end of the second quarter here. They've driven 91 yards so far. We'll give it to Person. Stays on his feet. Leary throws a block for him, but a penalty flag is thrown. This is going to be a crackback block against Devin Leary, and that's going to send North Carolina State further back. You cannot block back towards your own line of scrimmage. On top of that, it wasn't even a good block. Personal foul. Illegal blindside block. In the 13. Offense. Penalty is declined. Third down. Okay, so they're going to decline the penalty. Jeff Collins says give us third down and goal instead. Well, it's a really nice play of getting penetration by the defensive line at Georgia Tech. I believe it was Brooks, the walk-on. So, so Leary is supposed to run like a, a moon run there and get... You basically can't make the block. You just have to let that play go. It's or, kind of a player safety issue. Or what they're trying to do is basically have you run in front of the defender and cut him off yeah. without an actual block. Well, either way, the play was doomed from the get-go. They lost 12 yards, and now they got to figure something out. They go with the screen here. With Houston trying to break free, and he's not going to make it, but he does a great job of setting up fourth and goal inside the five. It, and this is a great play call. I can't stress enough. There's really nothing on your call sheet for that situation. And we mentioned the, the issue with the kicker earlier, Pat. They're going to probably go for it on fourth downs where they otherwise wouldn't. Here, getting to the two-yard line was huge. So, guys, this is going to be the fourth time between the two teams in the first half they go for it on fourth down. I think they're going to think about it here. Coach Torrance says, let's run the play clock, go ahead and run down, let's think about it. We'll see if they continue to maintain this decision after the timeout. I think they're just trying to leave less time on the clock after this play for Georgia Tech. We'll have the 18th play of the drive on the other side. I'm Matt Barry coming up on the Mazda Halftime Report. How is the Ramblin' Wreck running in the first half? Plus, Chase Young returns for Ohio State. And you, the beautiful viewer, are in for a treat. Jesse and Joey's virtual locks on a Thursday. That coming up on the Mazda Halftime Report. Adam, Matt, and Pat, back to you. Guys, thanks so much. Christopher Dunn tightened up before the game with dealing with that back issue. He is out to try to get North Carolina State on the board from 20. He will bang it through. One of the top kickers in the country. Wolfpack get points. Two minutes to go here in the first half. Great it out. Our college football award spotlight brought to you by the Home Depot featuring Christopher Dunn, a Lou Groza Award semifinalist, set a North Carolina State record as a freshman last year with 23 field goals. Remember to tune in for the Home Depot College Football Award Show December 12th at 7 Eastern on ESPN. But Molly, we saw Chris struggling a little bit coming off the field. Yeah, after that field goal, Christopher Dunn walked off the field cringing in obvious pain. He strained his back in pregame warm-ups and pointed to his back and right oblique and medical training staff put a heating pad on his back immediately but he is in pain, Adam. Great eyes, Molly. Thank you. Wanye Thomas on the return. He'll get hit right near the 20-yard line. 
Well, this season, Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the Live Moss Student Section of the Year. Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket Student Section already on the national watch list. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete or get the committee's attention by using hashtag Live Moss Student Section Contest. Those students have lived a lot of Moss. Two Moss or not enough Moss? What uh, do you think? Just the right amount of Just the right of amount of Moss? Nice showing by Georgia Tech in their student section yeah, tonight. Yeah, definitely, guys. Crunch wrap supreme, no sour cream. How's it going? 158 left here for James Graham, who's had a heck of a first half. There goes Jordan Mason again. Good run out to the 26. And most defensive coordinators will tell you a two-minute drive is going to start out with some play to the running back. A lot of times offenses, they want to get something going, something positive. Looks like Jordan Mason might have gotten hurt on that play, though. Yeah. So Jerry Howard runs onto the field for him. Nearing 100 yards tonight, Mason. Graham got rid of it under pressure from Jalen Scott. It'll bring up third down and four, guys. Yeah, Jalen Scott is the scraper there. So if you have a sprint out like that, and as a defender, you re recognize it, you're taught to scrape that outside blocker and get upfield in the quarterback's face quickly. Nice, nice job. Now, with a big stop like that, and it's third down, NC State has two timeouts, and they get the ball after the half. A little two-for-one Patriots Belichick mindset. And that's why this is so important here. If they're able to stop him and it's an incomplete pass pad, just like you said, NC State could take advantage. Graham has missed on his last three after starting four or five on the night. Keep it on the ground with Jemias Griffin. Nothing there. Excellent job off the edge by Ibrahim Conte. And now with a minute 13 left, the timeout's going to be used. NC State uses it. We'll step aside and we're right back in 30 seconds. Boomer and TJ having taken care of on Sunday evening on ESPN Plus. Great jacket. Presley Harvin the third with the punt. Thayer Thomas with the fair catch and he muffed it. Can't corral it and Georgia Tech looks like they had it. We'll see if it's ruled as such. It is. Jalen Askew. They had issues in the return game last week with Keon Lassane, who's out. Thayer Thomas muffs one here. When you have a punter that can put the ball up into the Side sky. It's Georgia Tech. Well, Side Georgia, Georgia Tech does not mind that. They like celebrating a sideline warning. Is okay with Coach Collins as long as they bring the juice. Presley Harvin puts one up to the moon. You get a lot of pressure around the returner. It's easy to take your eyes off the ball. Bang, it's a muff. Presley Harvin having an impact in this game here at the end of the first half. That's why he's our impact player tonight for Georgia Tech. Second team ACC last year, a freshman All-American two years ago. Contributes in a big way there to set Georgia Tech up at the 31. Back on the field, Jordan Mason. It's run out of bounds by Peyton Wilson. They're going to mark him inbound, so the clock continues to move. Only one timeout for NC State, but Georgia Tech has all three. And in fact, Jeff Collins is going to use his first here. We'll be back in 30 as well. Our Week 12 Monday Night Football matchup has the electrifying Lamar Jackson, who's an anomaly leading the Ravens into Los Angeles to take on Aaron Donald and the Rams. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6 p.m. American Standard Time. Can't wait to see Lamar in prime time. Second down and seven for Georgia Tech. Swing it out to Nathan Cottrell, who caught that fake punt touchdown against Miami, a special team stud and a veteran on this lineup. We'll take it out about a yard shy of the line to gain. Georgia Tech, that's their second timeout. Second timeout. Georgia Tech will take a timeout. Might see a field goal at the end of the half. Brenton King and Wesley Wells have been the kickers for Georgia Tech this year. Yeah, they're both above the line. They both have the potential to get on the field. And if they have to kick here at the end of the first half, they're going to kick into some beautiful nets with hands on them. This season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating university, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. 
Now watch me surf it. I'm on it. This Georgia Tech team has lit it up this first half. Offense has been hard to come by this season overall. Just 16 and a half points per game. That's 124th in the country. 125th in total offense. Didn't score last week in a shutout loss. Off to a great start tonight and a chance to tack on more at the end of the half. Fake the jet sweep to Brown. Graham launches. End zone incomplete. Trying to find Tyler Davis, the tight end. But Isaiah Moore comes up with a personal foul penalty. Fresh set of downs for Georgia Tech. Gonna get the ball in the 11 here. It was a big time stop on third down. And you know, I just, I just don't know. In 2019, I guess that's a penalty. When I played, that was not a penalty. That didn't look like a late hit to me. But I think I agree with Isaiah Moore. But I think the Georgia Tech faithful are very fired up that they get a fresh set of downs here, another chance to score right before the half. I've never taken a shot like that in my life. Well, I just don't know what you do as a defender. I don't know how you slow down. Yeah, he's flying to the ball. It's a little bit of half a step late. Back. Coach Doran also saying the same thing on the sideline over there. Third and final timeout. Third and final timeout. We'll take that 30-second break with Dave Doran in the pack. North Carolina State will host North Carolina next Saturday. UNC comes in as a 71% football power index favorite to that game. Georgia Tech trying to snap their three-game skin, get their first win since the overtime success at Miami. One timeout left for Georgia Tech. Graham, back corner for Brown. Another touchdown for Morian Brown. And that ties the freshman record at Georgia Tech. What a ball. What a throw, and he does it with a defender in his face. James Graham stares down the barrel of a gun, takes a monster hit, much worse than the one that got the roughing the passer, and he delivers a strike to his touchdown machine. Amari and Brown, all he does is catch touchdowns. The true freshman from Tampa is balling out this season. He's got a bright future here at Georgia Tech. I am so impressed with this guy. Big time turnover on the muff punt. They take advantage of it. They get a penalty that helps them out. And James Graham has been nothing short of impressive. And congratulations to Marion Brown, who has seven receiving touchdowns, which ties the school record. 21-3. Georgia Tech up 32 seconds left in the half. Should we expect some kind of extreme event <laughs> in Columbus this weekend? I don't know. My Pat, are you going to Columbus? I will be there in Columbus. I can't wait. I can't believe they welcomed me back. I think just the insurance premiums went up, so I'm a little worried about it more than anything else. Well, game day will be in Columbus Saturday night, though. We get to see a potential playoff team. Justin Herbert, number six Oregon, has to go on the road where upsets have been a plenty over the years. Herm Edwards trying to pull one off against a top 10 team Saturday night on ABC at 7.30 Eastern time as we get a look at our college football playoff rankings brought to us by Capital One. What do you guys think? I like Ohio State at one instead of LSU. LSU gave up wow. 614 yards against Ole Miss, who we will be seeing next week. Rich Rodriguez and that offense did well. But those top four, I think everybody can agree upon. So if you like Ohio State at one, does that mean that you don't think Penn State has a chance this weekend? Uh, I think in the horseshoe, it's going to be tough, especially with those incredible Buckeye fans. Better than a two-touchdown favorite going into that game. Nobody's been really close to Ohio State when the final score has been shown at the end of the game this season. Chase Young's back. Fields is balling. Ohio State looks like a buzzsaw right now. Can't wait to feel that energy over there in Columbus, Ohio. That might not be a great crowd, I don't think. <laughs> but I don't think anybody knows they're playing. Pat, what do you got planned this week? What are you wearing? <laughs> What's your outfit for college game day this week? I have no idea. Is it shorts? Is it pants? Is it jeans with a hole in the knee? I have no idea. Yeah, all I know is Georgia Tech and Atlanta have come alive. This is what they've been waiting for. This is what they're excited about for the future. Jeff Collins is building here in the 404. 
The 404 leads by 18 at halftime. It'll be Wolfpack ball in the third. Matt Berry and the boys are back in the studio for the halftime report. Adam, thank you. Welcome into the Mazda Halftime Report. Jesse, Joey, and Matt alongside as we've been for 13 consecutive weeks. College football season. NC State comes into this game having lost four straight. They're down at the half. What has Georgia Tech been able to do effectively early on? And Georgia Tech has lost three in a row, and it's interesting to watch this team play. They're 2-8 and eight on the season, nothing to play for, and you would think that they were the team that were trying to get ball eligible. They've been able to run the ball, and, and Mason has been terrific. Five yards last week against Virginia Tech. In this game, already right around 100 yards, they're a more physical team. They look like they want it more than NC State. And this isn't anything fancy either. You watch these offensive linemen. They're firing off the ball. They're getting push in the zone game. They're pulling guys. They're pinning guys. Just being more physically dominant. It's demoralizing if you're NC State. Their defense is only allowed three and a half yards per carry this year coming into this one. They're giving up 6.3 yards per rush so far tonight. And it's opened up windows for Graham throwing it. He's got three TDs for Georgia Tech. So really good balance right now offensively for the And O's. I tell you, if you are Georgia Tech, Tech. Good to see them. They had talked about at the end of the half trying to build this program as Coach Khan is 20 on three at the half. Uh, good to see them towards the end of the season. What's been a rough season. Are you guys excited for Christmas? Great play here. James Graham to Marion Brown. 11 yard touchdown pass. Right now it is all rambling wreck. 21 3 at that. This halftime report is presented by Mazda. Feel alive. This halftime report is presented by Mazda. Feel alive. Georgia Tech, good start for them and their young quarterback up 21 3 at the half. We'll go back to Atlanta after this. Welcome back to ESPN Thursday Night College Football presented by Dave and Busters from the ATL and the team from the ATL off to a great start. 21 to 3, tying the most points that Georgia Tech has scored in a half this season. It will be NC State ball to start the second half. Adam Amin, Matt Hasselbeck, Pat McAfee, Molly McGrath will join us in a moment as well. North Carolina State a little bit uh, tough start. Yeah, they've, they've struggled in all three phases. The offense has 179 yards in total, but they haven't been able to put points on the board. They got a field goal there late. Even though their kicker is hurting with a strained back, their defense was not ready for James Graham to do what he did. And in the special teams department, they muff a punt from Presley Harvin, who's been having a big game, but that led to even more points. They got to get things going. They're two wins away from being bowl eligible. I'd assume Coach Doran said that in halftime. Yeah, and on the other side, Georgia Tech, how impressive was this start? Pat, you mentioned the quarterback, James Graham. I got to give credit to Dave Patno, the offensive coordinator. He's got six. The quarterback has six pass completions, three of them for touchdowns. And you talk about explosive plays. They've been incredible tonight. Tanner Engel on the return. Steering to the sideline, making men miss, and we'll get one down to shy the 30-yard line. Well, moments ago, before they took the field for the second half, Jeff Collins imploring his team. He didn't come here just to dominate a half. No, no sir. He came here to dominate a game. game. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Strike fast, strike first. You did it. Yes, sir. Body blows. They continue the whole way through. Body blows, body blows, body blows, body blows. <laughs> and the last part is finish. Yeah. Finish the game. Finish every play. Finish, trying to finish off a third win and put an end to a three-game win streak. Losing streak, beg your pardon. Little pop pass from North Carolina State to Tabari Hines, the former Oregon Duck. And he'll take it out near the 35. I'm sure quote, Coach Jordan didn't have the same speech at halftime. It was much different. The NC State boys look pretty good here early. Pretty good return here. Pick up a quick six. Going to have to get something going. Keep it on the ground. Jordan Houston picks up the first down to the 40-yard line as we check in with Molly McGrath on the field. Well, Adam, Dave Doran told me that long drive at the end of the half gave his offense a lot of confidence. It showed them that they can win at the line of scrimmage and they can move the ball, but he said mistakes are just the thing stalling their drive. So his message to his team at halftime, just breathe, play, stop overthinking things. You need to finish your drives. And we saw place kicker Christopher Dunn in pain with a strained back. But Doran said he will play, but they're going to keep a close eye on him, Adam. And as Matt was talking about, this may affect their play calling. 
over the course of the rest of this game. And the other thing that sticks out right now is their play calling. They come out of that locker room at halftime, and they've been running the football. That's another consecutive run. That's an attitude statement decision in your play calling. Incomplete for Carter up the sideline, and Samari Walton gives him a little bit after the play, and a little bit of a finger wave, too, after all that. And it might, it might also be a little bit of an indictment on how they how they feel in their, about their passing game compared to how they used to feel about their passing game. Mentioned the previous two quarterbacks, Jacoby Brissett, Ryan Finley, both in the NFL. Now we've got younger guys. We've got a redshirt freshman in Devin Leary. So they're going to ride the wave of his growing pains here. But he's got to he's got to compete, especially on third down, if NC State's going to get back in this game. Come back for Carter, past the sticks, lost the football at the 45-yard line. But one official comes in and says incomplete pass. We hear this from officials a lot of the time. They don't want to give away cheap fumbles, so you need a clear establishment of the possession. We'll see if our guys in the booth feel that this was established possession. I actually thought that this was a catch and then a fumble. I would agree with you based on that first replay. It felt like a clear grab and then maybe a couple of steps up the field. Perhaps the defender pawing at the ball may have changed the idea of the initial call. Yeah, I love him. Ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. Previous play is under further review. So we'll have this review. We'll have the call on the other side. Early going second half. NC State could use a break. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Just a couple of weeks left in the regular season ACC championship game in Charlotte to follow. We did get a ruling. It was ruled as a catch and a fumble, but it's basically a moot point and actually turns out to be good for North Carolina State because Devin Carter had a clear recovery on that play. We weren't sure if it was going to be a clear recovery, but he had the ball in between his knees, and it ends up being a completion for 11 yards. Number two, Tariq Carpenter there was doing push-ups during the break there because he knows he missed an opportunity. When the ball's at, Matt, you got to jump on it. Yeah, and that was indisputable video evidence on the replay, and that's why it's still NC State's ball, and then also they get the, the first down, but Devin Carter getting an earful from his coach on the sideline. Now Devin Leary in plus territory sets up the screen for Zonovan Knight. And he's got it all the way down to the 35 for a first down. Zonovan Knight, true freshman out of Bailey, North Carolina, having a solid night. Fortunately, there's an injured Georgia Tech defender on the near sideline at the 40. These are two teams that have went through the war of attrition. So many injuries on both of these teams, a combined 89 starters. ESPN Thursday Night College Football. Brought to you by Pizza Hut, official pizza of college football. Order now at PizzaHut.com. No one out pizzas the hut. Pretty cool. We got a chance to be at the College Football Hall of Fame a couple of years ago as a company in August 2014. It opened up in downtown Atlanta, right down the street from Mercedes-Benz Stadium. North Carolina State today got a chance to go over to the College Football Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's really cool. If you ever get a chance to visit, I would say it's worth the visit. Pat, some of your friends made the trip down there today. Yeah, I got a chance to kick a field goal. Feel like a national champion. Old Zito knocked one through. It's, uh, it's a thing of beauty, really, to take a trip down memory lane of all the greats of college football. Going to be the site of the Home Depot College Football Awards. Bam Knight spinning his way down near the 20-yard line. We stick with Zonovan Knight. Tariq Carpenter was the injured Georgia Tech the Yellow Jacket who did go to the bench. This is a nice run. We mentioned Bam Knight was going to be a big part of the plan tonight. And after the play, Devin Leary looks over to the sidelines. It gives that, let's do it again, let's do it again, keep feeding him signal. I would have to agree, Bam Knight. Worth feeding. Right back to him. Good blocking, and he works his way down to the 15-yard line. All-time leading rusher at Southern Nash High School. Do you know what potential Hall of Famer in the NFL went to Southern Nash High School? Oh, I don't. Pat? Couldn't even guess. Julius Peppers. Ooh. 
pretty a, good athlete. A great defensive end. Also played some wide receiver and goal line in his NFL career. And, Ju and basketball. Julius Peppers ran for 3,500 yards in high school. Zonovan Knight ran for 5,000 yards and had 71 rushing touchdowns. But here, he gets stopped in his tracks. Kelton Dawson on the stop, guys. In the first half, NC State was able to put together an 18-play drive. Got three points out of it. Here's another long drive for NC State. Got third and seven. Can't settle for another field goal down here in the red zone. We mentioned Georgia Tech calls this the money down. No bigger one right now than this one for NC State, down 21 to 3. In desperate need of some positive points. They'll sling it out for Tabari Hines, and he just picks up the first down to the nine yard line. But Tabari Hines got the ball on the first play coming out of the locker room to start this half. And on the game's, or sorry, on this drive's biggest down, they go right back to him. It's essentially a pick play designed to get Hines the ball. Seems like that at halftime, they probably decided that he's got to be a bigger part of the plan. There's Knight. That's hit by Thomas. Down at the seven. That was a beautiful ball by Leary there. Right down the lens of the camera. Been able to move the ball here. Something's going on down the pile. A lot of men stacked on top of other men to scrum. And that is one of the things when you talk about how big this NC State offensive line is and how undersized the defensive line is for Georgia Tech, will they wear down? Like, is this a body blow, body blow, like Jeff Collins was talking about? Will those body blows add up for NC State where they could maybe take over in the running game and get back into this game? We talked about the rotation that Jeff Collins likes to use on his defense. Trying to stay fresh. Zonovan Knight right up the gut into the end zone. Much needed Wolfpack touchdown. And another extended drive. You guys talked about the long series. They do it with another double digit play drive. And they're not just plays. I mean, this is the 53rd play, but it's the 34th run. And it's an attitude play call. We're going right up the gut. Most defenses will tell you goal number one is to stop the run. You rarely see people just gash you right up the middle like that. And Dave Doran is sticking with the run even though he's down by a couple scores. Matt, it was a 12-play drive to your point. Eight runs, four passes. They leaned on the run game. Dunn a little bit gingerly walking towards the bench as he puts the extra point home. Zonovan Knight, he had 139 yards against Clemson. He's closing in 100 tonight. Pitt, Virginia Tech. Well, you actually might want to circle that one if you're an ACC fan. That is going to go a long way into determining who's going to have the best shot of taking out Virginia as the Coastal Division leader and eventual champion. That's on ESPN2. Mark Jones, Dusty Dvorak, Olivia Decker will have the call for you. Of course, North Carolina has Mercer this weekend. They'll have NC State next weekend. Georgia Tech will take on its clean, old-fashioned hate rival in Georgia. There goes Amarian Brown. This guy can absolutely burn it up. Good return out across the 30-yard line. Well, you guys, you saw Amarian Brown, but let's take a look at tonight's game flow brought to you by Progressive. I think it's going to contain a little bit of Amarian Brown. First play of the game, Pat, you called it. He takes the shot deep. Then they put him in the slot. He runs the corner route for a second touch. The quarterback calls his own number on the zone read, and then responds again to Oliver on the rollout for a, for a touchdown on the flag. Some people call it a corner, but everybody calls it a touchdown. Great job at Georgia Tech. <laughs> Another deep shot. Slinging it up there, and it's incomplete. Trying to find a target in Adonicus Sanders. Might have been the most efficient first half for Georgia Tech all season. Up 18 there. Looking to get things going. Coach Doran, though, NC State Wolfpack, though, answered the bell there in the second half. Yeah, and they started off with an aggressive play call going deep, and then they come out the first play here. Dave Patnoad goes to another deep shot, giving his quarterback a chance to showcase what he can do in the passing game. You mentioned, Pat, early that he's got a live arm. He's a natural thrower. They're giving him opportunities to showcase that. Keep it on the ground with Mason here. 
And a maintenance play to try to set up a third down and medium. He called it a maintenance play. That was one of the things I liked in our meetings yesterday. He said, listen, on first down, we'd love to get a run of about four yards. On second down, we're trying to cut the down distance in half, get half of it back, give us a third and five, third and six. Both offensive coordinators talked about doing it, but Georgia Tech's been the team that's been able to do it the best tonight. Jordan Mason goes over 100 yards rushing on the night. He steps out and Jemias Griffin is in. They'll go to the tight end, the grad transfer from Connecticut, Tyler Davis for the first down. First time since 07 they brought the tight end back to Georgia Tech, Pat. They like Tyler Davis a lot. And they also like James Graham. He's been able to make plays happen here with his arm. They trust him on third and six. Little out route there by Davis. Delivers the rock high where only his guy can get it. Big time first down here to extend the drive of the series. You get it. 36 games at UConn, including playing against Jeff Collins and Temple a couple times. There goes Graham with another good run for a first down. Inside the 40 of North Carolina State, 14 more, Matt. Yeah, and I think this might be a broken play. They had something designed here, but Graham doesn't catch the ball clean, and he just decides, <laughs> hey, I'm going to make something out of nothing and just head north and south. And he's fired up. He realizes that they got the bullet there, and that's a nice little play. I was laughing because he ran over his own offensive lineman. Yeah, he was like, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be here. The play's going over there. By the way, back-to-back -back first down is huge for the defense of Georgia Tech to just had to withstand a 12-play yeah. drive. Great ball. 40 yards there for Jemias Griffin. Griffin was the Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Georgia and originally committed to North Carolina State, but his brother, Jaquan, is a redshirt freshman defensive lineman at Georgia Tech. He's got another brother at Virginia Tech, by the way. Pretty good family playing football. But Griffin was thinking of going to play for Dave Doran. Jeff Collins gets the job at Georgia Tech, makes it a point to recruit in-state and in the city, more importantly, and he gets the suburban Atlanta native to flip his commitment. And he's a runner. I mean, he's had some highlight runs this year. You got to account for him. There goes Graham as he works his way down to the 30, about a yard short of the line to get. Coach Miller on the stop. Coach Jeff Collins talked a lot about recruiting. He loves recruiting, and it's going to be big for this Georgia Tech program. They got some pieces in place. They're going to have to revamp, remodel. And he said, if he can get me in a room with a kid with a chance to get him, he thinks he can bring him into Georgia Tech, and that's good for the Georgia Tech fan base. Yeah, they're doing some creative things. I mean, mentioned earlier they use analytics, they use technology. They're getting creative with the grad transfers. Georgia Tech is obviously appealing to a lot of people who want to come to school here. They're thinking about everything. They're realizing that they got to do a little bit more to get back on track here. And the local kids from Atlanta want to come back. Trying to get the first down with Mason. Needed the 29. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Isaiah Moore wrapped him up. And then his teammates helped finish it off. So fourth down and short coming up. And James Graham is lobbying for them to go for it on fourth down. <laughs> Dave Patnode, I got the I got the sense that he has a lot of trust in James Graham as a quarterback. You know, he's only a redshirt freshman, but sitting down with him yesterday, talking about his team, who they have, it really felt like he had a lot of trust in the athletic ability and, and really the potential of his young quarterback. Time out. This is a big time, time fourth and short here. Start the drive. Welcome back to ESPN Thursday Night College Football presented by Dave and Buster's crucial fourth down for Georgia Tech on its opening series of the second half. Wolfpack have scored a touchdown. Dave Patno, the offensive coordinator, 51 years of age, was the OC with Jeff Collins at Temple throwing his offense out there. A little old-school option look. Mason has the first down. Some shades of Paul Johnson to move the chains. There's so much to dissect here. First of all, the discipline of the offensive line whenever the defense shifted before him to stay on side. Then you run the triple option, which Georgia Tech was known for for a long time. James Graham makes a right read, pitches that thing to Mason. Big time first down on a fourth and short. Hey, I know they want to be a pro passing attack, but this used to be the bread and butter here at Georgia Tech. They have 13 former running backs on this roster, people who know how to run that play right there, and they ran it to perfection. 
option on a big fourth down. Mason played B-back, the fullback position in the triple option last year. Another option look, and this time Griffin maybe a yard on the play. It's a throwback Thursday, two plays in a row here <laughs> there you at go. Georgia Tech. We talked to Coach Jeff Collins yesterday. He said, listen, we have to run a pro style because we got to let the recruits know that we're a different offense than we were in the past. But whenever you need it, you got the guys for the option, taking advantage of it here. We were in that meeting with Pat Node yesterday. And who came in? Tashard Choice, the former running back here. Too tall from Graham, looking for Malachi Carter. If that ball is on target, Carter has a lot of space in front of him. And that's one of the reasons why you can't take the easy way out and stay with that triple option. You want your team to develop. You want your quarterback to develop as a pocket passer. This is a stand-up touchdown with a better throw. And James Graham has had a great night tonight, but he knows that he let one go there. It's a missed opportunity. That would have been another easy six for Georgia Tech. How come ball sailing like that? He didn't have his feet right. So that's a lower body issue. Absolutely, it's a foundation issue. You gotta get your feet right in order to get accurate up top. And that happens sometimes as a right-handed quarterback when the receiver is running really fast from the right to the left. You don't get your hips open, and that's what happened there. That's their second time out of the half. 30 second timeout. Never want to use your timeouts in odd numbered quarters. Here we are, two in for Jeff Collins and Georgia Tech Elegy. That play clock is winding down. Well, Justin Herbert, number six, Oregon, trying to keep their college football playoffs hope alive. Uh, hopes alive. Don't forget, they still have Oregon State coming up. And if they win out, they're in the Pac-12 championship game as the representative of the North. Could be on a collision course with Utah, maybe USC, which still has an opportunity to make it to the Pac-12 title game. Molly McGrath, by the way, will have USC, UCLA with her crew on Saturday. You like Justin Herbert a lot. You know what he's capable of. I really do. And, you know, he's going up against Herm Edwards in an Arizona State team, but Justin Herbert's a guy that's going to be either the first, second, or the third quarterback taken in the draft next right. year. We don't know exactly where. Some people have him as the second quarterback right now. But either way, he's going to be playing on Sundays. He's quite a talent. Big guy, great arm, pretty good runner. I think everyone's got to say that, you know, he's one of the best. Joe Burrow, Tua Tunga by Loa, Jalen Hurts, all names are going to be out in the draft pool coming up next year. Blitz from the Wolfpack on third down and nine. Graham sees it. Graham blows past it. Graham's got the touchdown. What you guys talked about at the top with this 3-3-5 NC State defense, James Graham might see some holes. He just saw a big one. Things that work well against all-out pressures, screens and quarterbacks that can get past the first wave. That was a casino blitz, which is feast or famine. James Graham, who's a freak athlete, saw it, took a time, bang, touchdown for Georgia Tech Illinois. Yeah, they call it a casino blitz because it's a gamble. Like you said, it's feast or famine. With five but but Georgia Tech was moving the ball. That drive was 11 plays, 67 yards. And sometimes you feel like, hey, we need to make a play on defense. They might have gotten away with a hold there on Murchison. Either way, bad call or not, it's a touchdown for Georgia Tech. That's a great answer to what NC State did coming out of the locker room. NC State scores a touchdown, makes this thing an 11-point game. Georgia Tech and James Graham, who had his best first half, comes out and answers right back with an 11-play drive to score another tutty. We mentioned he's a hundred and oh, sorry, one ten meter hurdle champion. Yep. The four by champion. To have that kind of athleticism and speed at the quarterback position, and then he's able to throw the way that he threw in the first half. Really, really, really tough to defend. Well, he misses that throw, knows that he owes his team one. Bang, hits it. Touchdown. It'd be great to be that athletic just one time in my life. And, just gonna say, did you notice like the battery pack on the back of his jersey there? If you see it, you see that battery pack, that big bulge in the back? That's actually, they're tracking how fast he runs, how much he runs. I'm curious to know how fast he might have run on that quarterback draw. That was, he was flying. Kick for the up man, it'll be a fair catch. So to the 25 yard line comes North Carolina State. Molly, do you know anything about this uh, whole catapult thing? Yeah, it's a GPS tracking device. It measures distance.
distance and effort, and I worked closely with NC State's Director of Sports Performance, Timothy Ravis, to get my first half stats. So I was wearing one the entire first half, and both teams use this, and Jeff Collins actually coaches to it. He looks to see what kind of effort his players are giving during games, and uh, I don't know if you guys have it up or if you're curious, but we can look at my first half stats. I would love to see it. <laughs> Let's see what you got, Molly. I can't wait till we see that. It is. Technology is we changing the game. We just needed a drum roll right there. We're <laughs> waiting for the drum roll. Well, we'll wait after this play first. Leary, nice strike up the seam for Tabari Hines, former duck. Molly? So, Adam, in the first half, I walked over 5,700 yards. Wow. I wow. topped off at 10.5 miles per hour. That had to have been for an injury. And I had one explosive movement, one quick burst. <laughs> Molly, over awesome three stuff. miles there. Impressive. Here's a Mezzi on the shot. There is a penalty marker thrown. Trey Swilling was in coverage. That's been a fun matchup to see. We'll check the marker here in a moment. But to Molly's point, it's not just, oh, how fast are you going? How much are you running? It's not a Fitbit. This is tracking movement, sudden change, how much you're exerting your energy on each play. Holding defense, number 14. 10 yard penalty, automatic, first down. Jalen King got caught for that holding penalty. North Carolina State with a fresh set of downs. I, I'm guessing this is the sprint. That's 10 miles an hour right there. Molly <laughs> McGrath getting the inside information. Not, and not, wearing, and not, wearing, and not, not wearing the athletic shoes tonight either. It's interesting with the technology. Both teams are using it, and they decide a lot of things. Practice schedules game reps, everything. They live and die by these numbers that Mechanical gives them. And why it's so important to Jeff Collins is he's like, listen, this is our brand of football. This is what we're going to be built on, effort. And I actually have something tangible where I can measure your effort from a Tuesday to a Wednesday to a Thursday to a Friday. I can understand what you're capable of and then what you're giving me each each week in practice. There's nowhere to hide anymore with these Mechanical things, which I think guys like me would definitely miss. <laughs> I, th I feel like Pat would find a way to like disable his somehow. <laughs> Do you have a jailbroken catapult? Oh boy. Oh, that's a dangerous throw, and it's somehow caught at the 24 yard line by Josiah Provolone. Desperation heaved by Leary for 20. Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. Late down the middle is really never anything you're trying to do, but this ball has oh. eyes, somehow finds a way to Provolone. That was incredible. Made a play. Back to the ground. Houston, what a tackle by David Curry, the son of the two-time All-Pro linebacker, Buddy. Loss of a yard on the play. Well, David Curry's one of their leaders. He's a very tough player. Middle linebacker, plays inside. And they're looking for a little bit of leadership. They're looking for some toughness. A lot of freshmen and sophomores playing out here. Curry, the junior, definitely a guy that guys look up to. His dad, Buddy, a two-time All-Pro linebacker for the Falcons, was the 1980 Defensive Rookie of the Year in the NFL. On second down, they'll throw underneath for Jordan Houston. There's Curry right on cue with the tackle at the 18-yard line. This is some fun footage to che check out with Buddy. How about these photos? <laughs> Love the red helmets for the Falcons back today. The big plastic face mask with the one right down the center. Yank them, poke me in the eyes. <laughs> That was back when football was football. I, I like those. You're probably playing them. Back to the ground on third down and four, and Houston right to the sticks at the 14-yard line. But they're going to spot the football at the 15, say it's short. You know, the NC State offense has two very good young running backs in Zonovan Knight and Jordan Houston. They're building for the future, obviously, due to injuries, but this Houston guy is a nice burst to Zonovan's Power again. One down by Tariq Carpenter. Kept the ball just shy of the sticks. North Carolina State one for two on fourth down tonight. It's fourth and less than one, and they're in shotgun. They've gone QB sneak the previous two times. Dave Dorn looks like he wants to think this one over. Timeout. North Carolina State. That's their first timeout of the second half. 
Matt, talk to me a little bit about what you're doing on Sunday when you head back to Bristol. Well, guys, as you know, I'm on Sunday NFL Countdown at 10 in the morning every week with uh, Samantha Bonder, Randy Moss, Rex Ryan, Teddy Bruschi. But this week, I'm sitting down with Seattle's quarterback, Russell Wilson. Dak Prescott's going to tell us the story behind all of his tattoos. That's a good one. And Randy Moss is going to rank the best catches from college football. You look so cool with Russell Wilson right there. You look like a proud dad. Current Seahawk, former Seahawk. Well, Certainly one of the MVP candidates in the NFL he's, right now. He's so good. He's so good. And he, I'll just tell you right now, he, he's really good at basketball as well. But our talk is really about Pete Carroll and uh, being coached by him. But I, the story I really want to tell after this fourth down, I want to tell the catapult story about Pat McAfee when we were teammates. <laughs> it is absolutely ridiculous. I know a Pat McAfee story is hard to... Imagine it would be ridiculous, but it's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I, I refuse to believe it until I hear it, Matt. Uh, Fourth down and short. They were in the shotgun before the timeout. They load up the backfield with Leary under center. And the middle of the D-line looks wide open again. And Leary was trying to get there. He's already converted once tonight. This is going to be up to the officials. This will depend on the spot. You can review it if it's short. But they're going to say... First down, I believe. I think the far side headlines been set it. And Gary Patterson, the elite official, says yes. None of these quarterback sneaks have been very decisive or impressive, but they've all been effective. Three for three. <laughs> I got I would gotta say, Devin Leary, you're a young quarterback. There's a lot to work on. Quarterback sneak is one of the things we need to work on. And that's a real talent, by the way. Some guys have it, some guys don't. It's Tom a skill. Brady, very good at very it. Very good at it. Luck was incredible at it. Tom Brady's the best in the business at the quarterback sneak. Leary under pressure, back shoulder for Hines, who was spinning. Leary was being chased by David Curry, who was in the backfield that time. And Leary did a nice job just to get this ball off and give his wide receiver a chance. He had pressure early. Kind of a little gimmick play there where they tried to fake a wide receiver screen and take a shot. Georgia Tech didn't fall for it. Little back shoulder ball, a la Ryan Finley. NC State has to find a way to get a touchdown on this drive. Blitz off the edge from Carpenter. In the middle, it's Knight into Dominic. Short gain, third down coming up. It's a big play by Dominic. I've been impressed Ooh. by him. He's a redshirt freshman, but he doesn't play like it. Well, he got a little chippy in the interior there. Guys on the ground, guys shoving each other. We've seen that physicality all night between these two desperate teams. We've got a mass substitution here in Pat. What do you think about this? Every time it's a third down, it's this place lights up. Money down, money down. The old white guy that's the MC for the stadium even starts screaming, it's the money down. All of Atlanta knows this is where you make your money here. Need a big stop. A third down and eight. Leary underneath, incomplete for Hines. He still had a couple defenders in front of him needing the four yard line. Now it's fourth down and eight. We've talked to you about Christopher Dunn's back issue tonight and he's gonna make his way out he's already made one field goal tonight from about 20. this kid's incredibly talented when your back's tight everything can change your steps your plant you can't go as hard as it to tend to push the ball a little bit because you can't swing as much through he's been doing well this evening thus far oh no did i do it let's see 29 yarder you can breathe easy, McAfee. That's why he's a Luke Rose in the semifinals. They were just named at the semifinalists this past week. Saturday Night Football on ABC in Tempe, Arizona. Presented by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. By the way, the Ducks have won nine in a row since that week one loss to Auburn on the neutral site. And they've beaten Arizona State 11 of the last 12 meetings dating back to 2005. But go back to 2000 for one of the wilder games in the history of this program. Joey Harrington, a year before he would become a Heisman Trophy finalist, 
threw for 434 yards. Arizona State had a chance in double overtime on the conversion. Bruce Snyder disappointed the head coach of the Arizona State Sun Devils in a wild game where the two teams combined for 111. This was before Chip Kelly took over at Oregon, and we saw the offensive explosion in college football. Speaking of offense, you see Christopher Dunn being tended to by the training staff. It has been a struggle for him, battling through a couple of key kicks tonight. Hey, trying to keep that back loose, trying to keep those muscles loose. I don't know if that's the oblique. I don't think I've ever worked it out, but you keep that thing a little bit fluid so you can get through the ball. Big time kicks by Chris Dunn, who's been battling through some things here. All right, do I have a t do I have time to tell Pimmy, my Yeah, absolutely, so absolutely. We, we're playing in the NFL. Pat and I are teammates together. Everyone on the field's wearing the catapult system, measuring how fast guys run. T.Y. Hilton's running 20 miles an hour. Well, one day, Pat McAfee runs 22 miles an hour. Ooh. And they call him in like, Pat, what the heck happened? How'd you run 22 miles an hour? Pat McAfee at practice is out there riding around on a golf cart. <laughs> <laughs> Getting the speed up. <laughs> Fastest guy on the field. <laughs> they never let me utilize the catapult again. That was a real shame. Real shame they took that out of my locker. So, so when I said you'd find a way to disable it, it's either that or just completely skirt the system. Well, because every, every day they read all the catapult results. Like, who's working the most? Who's the fastest? Yep. Who's the most explosive? And on that particular day, I just thought of Chuck Pagano reading the quote. Like, who's the fastest guy on the field? Batman. <laughs> 22.8 miles an hour. I was like, wide you were a cheat. You were a cheetah back yeah. in the day, McAfee. I was wide open. I was speeding in some school zones. <laughs> Take that catapult the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Technology is a good thing, though, and you can abuse it as well. <laughs> <laughs> Technology is uh, is user sensitive, like most things are on this planet. Three yards on that run to start this drive for Mason. Both teams have a 100-yard rusher, by the way. 106 for Mason, 100 for Bam Knight of NC State, guys. You know, both offenses have been doing relatively well. The difference is NC State has been settling for field goals and getting turnover on downs, where Georgia Tech has been able to score tutters. This Georgia Tech offense, I did not expect it to perform how it's been performing. I mean, it's been really yeah. good. And also, the words performing, not performing. <laughs> Can you spell that? Just like that? <laughs> Movement off the left side. That'll be the left tackle. Side of the snap. Call start. Number 73. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Just a reminder there, Zach Quinning's the egg white guy. The guy that was having egg white egg whites or an egg white omelet at Waffle House when Jeff Collins took the job and he said uh-uh no more my offensive line is not allowed to have egg whites well again to back up the story last year when Georgia Tech played Georgia the average weight of their offensive line granted in a triple option offense was 264 they have bumped that up about a year later to 302 impressive work by the strength staff and the nutrition staff at Georgia Tech there goes Graham with another good run and he's past the 35 for a first down he's out across the 40 a little delay there for James Graham. Let the block set, find a hole, and pick up some big yardage. Yeah, Pat, you said it's a delay. All this is is a lead draw, but instead of handing it off to the running back, the tailback's going to be the lead blocker. Nice play call. The quarterback draw has been very effective for these guys tonight. You heard Jeff Collins in that speech to his team before the start of the third quarter. Body blow, body blow, body blow. Finish this game. They haven't won since mid-October. They're trying to build a program under a first-year coach. Georgia Tech leads by 15. Wolfpack bull hopes are disintegrating. Start of the fourth quarter. 28-13 Georgia Tech. They've got the football and a fresh set of downs. In their own 42-yard line. Trying to snap a three-game skid. Graham with a run to the 45-yard line. Molly, some interesting things being handed out on the sidelines. Yeah, I noticed that um, people on Georgia Tech staff were passing out skittles to all of the defensive players. I'm told this is the first time they've ever done that. They were taking him back like little sugar shots. <laughs> and you know Jeff Collins wants his team to gain a little bit of weight, so these are um, empty calories to give him a little boost in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Where's Marshawn Lynch when you need him? He's probably on a golf cart breaking the catapult as well. <laughs> I was going to say, put him on that cat. Get the catapult video from when he was driving that golf cart at Cal. A lot of sudden movements. Riding the read. Good keep by Graham. First down and more inside the 40. I mean, James Graham is just taking this game over. I mean, 
First play of the game from scrimmage. He drops a 54-yard dive. Now in the second half, you got the defense a little bit tired. They're injured. James Graham taking it to the ground to show his elusiveness, his explosiveness, and there is a 23-yard gain for the kid. And it's that split backfield formation where Graham's in the gun. He's got two backs on either side of him. NC State knows it's coming. They know some form of run is coming. They still aren't able to stop it. That's a hell of a night there. 339 yards, three TDs passing, one rushing. It's a big night for James Graham. He's got to cap it off, though. He's got to finish the fight here. And Coach Jeff Cohen said he have to. Oh, no. Oh, that ball is loose. North Carolina State's got it. The round merchants in there stood on front dome on top of it. And North Carolina State, after not having a single takeaway in ACC play, has two tonight. It's that same formation we talked about where they're going back to their option roots. But maybe that's why you got to practice it over and over and over again. A little bit of miscommunication there on the mesh point. That's twice tonight where we've had a little bit of indecisiveness on that mesh point. And Murchison's a game wrecker ends up on top of that thing, number 92 for NC State. Hadn't had a turnover in a long time, ranked 130 out of 130. Got a big one there in the fourth quarter as James Graham was starting to hit his stride. And Murchison's the best player on the field for NC State, without a doubt. The NFL scouts that are here tonight, they're here to see him. He's an athletic guy playing defensive tackles, almost 300 pounds, was a high school running back. Does a huge play for NC State. The grad trans the grad the graduate, this the fifth year guy steps up when the team needs him. And you guys were talking about it. Ravens, Jaguars, Falcons have all sent representatives from their scouting departments to watch a handful of guys tonight. Murchison is certainly towards the top of the list for all those guys. And can I give a shout out to Rick Spielman of the Minnesota Vikings? That dude is at all these Thursday night games. I mean, he's doing his homework, so uh I'm not sure what position he's looking for exactly, but he's been on the road. The Minnesota Pike. Tabari Hines. Big gainer. We'll take it down inside the 40-yard line. A key gain for Hines. 29 yards, guys. If you're NC State's offense, you've been able to move, but you haven't been able to score. You get a big turnover now. Leary drops a good ball to Hines. Bang across the middle. Pick up a big chunk here in the fourth quarter. Only down two scores now, 15 points. And that's just an RPO, but I would say this, Tabari Hines needs more opportunities. Every time he's had an opportunity, he's made something good happen. Leary for Hines. Got him. First and goal, North Carolina State on cue. Man, it's almost like you're in their huddle over there. 31 yards on this one. It's the same thing. It's a little bit of a play action. It's not even a good play action, but they just leave Hines Wide open, running right down the middle. Leary delivers a strike. Leary can spin it. Zonovan Knight, nothing there. Good job getting into the backfield by Tariq Carpenter. Second and goal. Now here we go. We're in the red zone. Have to punch it in. Can't get another field goal. Although Chris Dunn has had an incredible evening. Have to get a field goal here. Or have to get a touchdown here. Injured Georgia Tech player. Media timeout. Looks like Brentavius Glanton, redshirt senior, 35th career game. We'll step aside. Guys, on that last play, Georgia Tech came with a run blitz. They have Carpenter coming off the edge right there, saying, hey, you can't run the ball. But look at the corners. Look at the DBs. They're all playing a little bit outside technique so that NC State can't just throw a fade ball. If NC State wants to throw the ball and score, more likely they're going to have to throw a slant. We've got Hines in the slot to maybe throw the slant, too. In motion, Hines will throw up the middle. Carry Angeline, the tight end, with a touchdown. A huge score for NC State. He'll cut the lead down to nine. I love that play call. Me too. A misdirection, eye distraction. They've got a jet sweep motion with a strong tight end set to the defense's right. And the play action leaves Angeline wide open down the middle. Yeah, that can get confusing when you got all that window dressing. Here, Angeline benefited from it with a great touchdown here for the NC State Wolfpack. Well, guys, we've talked about takeaways. 
NC State had had one in ACC play. They have cashed in on both of the Georgia Tech turnovers tonight for 14 points. Well, we mentioned it. Murchison, the best player on the field for NC State, steps up with a huge turnover, and the offense is able to turn it into points. Tez Kitchen said we're going to get the tight end involved. Big play right there. Terrible story back in March when would-be senior Brandon Adams passed away at age 21. And you see, this is pregame. They do their stretching at the 90-yard line, they call it. Brandon Adams wore number 90. Obviously, it's the 10. They call it the 90-yard line. That's where they start their stretches. They do the Big B chant. They honor their fallen teammate. And every week, Jeff Collins assigns a player to wear the number 90 that Brandon Adams wore. This week, it's Tyler Cooksey. Veteran tight end, comes to work every day, Jeff Collins says, never complains, 34 career games, never had a catch, but is on special teams. And that's a way that they honor their former teammate. He said Brandon was one of the best teammates you could find, one of the best human beings you could find. And that's why they assigned that number to a player that epitomizes and embodies the things that Brandon Adams epitomized and embodied. They have the number 90 in a heart on the top of that jersey, guys. It's a really nice thing that they do here, and they mentioned that Brandon was one of the best teammates, and they said the same thing about Cooksey, who has that honor to represent his teammate tonight. Chris Martin, who was one of the close friends of Brandon Adams, was the first one to wear it, and a slew of players have worn that number 90 since for Georgia Tech. Inside of 12 to play, fresh set of downs for Georgia Tech at the 25. It's a one-score game. And a deep shot from Graham for the speedster, Amari on Brown, and he dropped it. He's going to hate watching that one on film this week. The freshman couldn't come down with it. Once again, James Graham drops it in the bucket, has pressure off the edge. I believe that was Murchison. And Marion Brown had a good four or five steps on it. Goes right through his hands. And whenever you're a explosive, speedy guy, the deep ball is the one you got to get. He's made some big plays tonight. He's going to regret that this evening. And what was interesting about that is he ran it from the slot. Usually you see that route. The guy on the outside runs that. But he ran it from inside, from the slot, which you just don't expect it. That's really, really tough to defend. Back to Mason. Both he and Graham are over 100 yards rushing tonight. Yard on that play. I mean, why it's so tough is those defensive backs, those corners are used to it. But that next guy, that nickel back or that safety that's right in there, you're expecting something on an out route maybe a stop route or maybe across the field. You don't see people just run right by you like that. He's got gears at that dude, thank God. <laughs> That's tough to defend. You gotta hope for a drop right there. Marion Brown had a touchdown against Virginia a couple of weeks back. He was running 21 miles per hour. That would have been one of the best marks at the NFL Combine this past year. That would have been one of the best marks at the NFL Combine, but still not as fast as Pat McAfee in the golf cart. Graham. Well, wanted to run. Now he's going to try to pass, and it was nearly intercepted. It may have been deflected to the Georgia Tech receiver. Are you kidding me with that? Malik Dunlap couldn't haul it in. And Donica Sanders comes out of nowhere for a first down conversion. Pandemonium, Matt Hasselbeck. <laughs> he looks like he wants to run. He says, no, I don't have anywhere to go. I'm going to scramble. It looks like it's an interception. To Dunlap, but the ball pops right up. The ruling on the field is a catch. Previous play. One handed <laughs> scoop up underneath it to pick up a first down. Things are going the right way for James Graham. And if you're Dave Doran, if you're Dave Doran, this is indicative of the kind of season that they've had this year. They get no breaks. Might have hit the ground. They're going to review it. What a play, potentially. 28 20, fourth quarter, big play on the other side. Call in the field overturned, so a near run becomes a pass that became a near pick by Dunlap that became a near completion to Adonica Sanders. But during the break, after the review, they're going to rule it basically as an incomplete pass, just as if Dunlap was a wide receiver and he couldn't complete the process of the catch. So now Harvin with the punt rolls inside the 25. 
54 yard punt. When we're done here in Atlanta, John Butchergrass, Michael Eaves will have Colts, Texans post game reaction. And what's been a fun one tonight, Jacoby Brissett, former NC State quarterback, doing some work. NFL's ruling on Miles Garrett's suspension. And Carmelo follows up his Portland debut against Giannis and the Bucks. Sports Center on ESPN. When we're done, Carmelo, 18.7 rebounds tonight in the loss. 40% shooting night the other night. MVP candidate, former NC State Wolfpack quarterback Jacoby Brissett playing the Texans right now. Yep, big game tonight. <laughs> big game. You know who's having a big half? Leary. Yeah. Same with Houston. This is Houston. Good one on first down. Leary's 9 of 13 for 141 yards in this half. One touchdown. It has been nothing short of spectacular to watch this NC State team come out in the second half here. Yeah, and to think that Georgia Tech really, it feels like they've dominated this game, but NC State's just down eight. They're right in it. And like you said, Pat, if Leary can stay hot in the second half, NC State's got a chance, and their ball hopes stay alive. Wolfpack need to win tonight and next week against North Carolina to reach a bowl for a sixth straight year. They pick up the first down with Houston. And a good tackle for the backside from the defensive end, Jordan Dominic, to run him down after 18. This is a really impressive run by Houston. It looks like Houston, we have a problem to start it out. They bring a corner blitz right to the side that they're running it to. Check out the corner up top. The ball's on the right hash. He blitzes right into it. Houston goes right up inside for a huge gain. That was a feast or famine opportunity there. It was a feast for NC State. It reminds me a lot of Austin Eckler. I can't say it. Him and Zonovan are a great backfield for the NC State Wolfpack going forward. Little Back to the ground here. Little thunder, little lightning. Don't be caught in the storm. Well, I saw the Chargers a few weeks back. Melvin Gordon had just returned. Gordon and Eckler, very different running backs, but they are both very productive in their own ways. I think Dave Dorn feels that way about the four guys he's been rotating in. Yeah, Adam, where do the Chargers play again? Los Angeles? Oh, okay, just checking. Did I say San Diego? No, I wanted to oh, see okay. if you did. I was going to make you do five push-ups. Oh, push okay, okay, okay. Pat would have taken over the play-by-play uh, -play while you did it. Oh, please, God. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the ground game. There goes Houston. Right to the sticks. They're going to say first down. Another move of the chains on the ground by the freshman. They are running this football. I mean, they are committed to this run. They were down a bunch at halftime. They came out and they said, you know what? We don't care. We're going to get keep pounding it. We're going to make the run game part of the plan. And they're back in the game. Guys, North Carolina State has 71 snaps tonight to Georgia Tech's 49. 43 of the 71 plays for the Wolfpack have been rushing. And that's what I was trying to say earlier with this undersized line that Georgia Tech has. At some point in the fourth quarter, you think that might be an advantage for NC State. Ricky Person got grabbed from behind by Jaquan Griffin. Three-yard gain there to the 40. And Pat, Jeff Collins was telling you yesterday that that's why, one of the reasons why that he rotates in so many guys on defense so everyone can give max effort and stay fresh. Yeah, Coach Collins loves the line change to keep people fresh, but whenever you're just getting run down right now, you can really a war of attrition here. Here's Person. He's putting a shoulder into Carpenter. Got a penalty marker thrown at the 40. We'll have to check that flag. Looked like he got right to the sticks, but let's see what the penalty is. And it's an indication for holding. Holding, number 71, offense, 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Joe Sculthorpe, left guard. Pat, what did you say? It was relentless positivity. Relentless positivity. And if you watch this Georgia Tech sideline right now, that I holding call might have been a touchdown. <laughs> it looked like it was a touchdown the way that they celebrated. They've been running to the left side here. Sculthorpe gets a little handsy, they say. That was a late hit there also, too, potentially. It was a late flag. I think that's maybe part of why Georgia Tech is so excited about it. They didn't expect to get the call. Well, backs him up to second and 17. Leary under pressure, trying to dump it off on the screen for Houston. Broken up by Charlie Thomas. We saw the, that play, similar play on a shovel pass last week, become disastrous against the Louisville defense. This is a really nice play by Charlie Thomas because they had something really good 
being set up, but Charlie Thomas has good instincts on the play. He snuffs it out. Almost had an opportunity to get that ball. This is another one of those situations where it's third and forever, but could be two down territory if you get a huge chunk here, but not a first. Just a four-man rush against Leary with time. Separation and a catch for a first down by Devin Carter. I thought there may have been a push-off there by Carter to get the space. May have been a push-off? What do you mean by may have been a push-off? <laughs> that is like the definition uh, of a push-off. I think it might have got a little handsy there in the end, but Carter has been a weapon here tonight for Leary. Made a couple big-time plays. This Devin Leary guy has, hasn't blinked in the face of adversity. It was a great back shoulder ball there. You know what I love about college football? We're not sitting there reviewing that play. That's what would happen in the NFL right now. Devin Carter got smacked over the middle by David Curry. These linebackers, man, are something. Curry and Thomas in particular. Curry's the big hitter on this team. Talk about him being a leader in the middle there, having great instincts. One of the veteran guys for this, for this club. Let's go down to Molly. Adam, David Curry was easily the most vocal player on the sideline. He was fired up telling teammates, someone needs to make a play. Get your hands on the ball, stressing turnovers and physicality. He was embarrassed by that loss last week. There goes Ricky Person breaking tackles. David Curry's not going to like that. His defense just gives up a big chunk, and it sets up first down for the 12. David Curry was actually coming from the opposite side there. They run Ricky Persons the opposite direction. Find a big hole there with the offensive line. They got a little three-headed monster in the backfield for NC State right now. Running, throwing, they got it going on for the Wolfpack. Yeah, Jeff Collins said body blow, body blow, but it's been NC State sticking to the run game with the body blow, body blow. And it's nice to have Person back. Adam, you said it earlier, he's the veteran. Only a sophomore, but he's the veteran of this running back group. Right back to him. Makes the cut. Still on his feet, trying to pound forward, and he is just shy, but it's first down and goal for North Carolina State. I mean, just another incredible run. Out. Injured Georgia Tech player. At some point, this isn't a body blow, it's an uppercut. Uppercut. Oh, I guess what you're saying. It's a boxing metaphor, I like it. I like it. Look like Tariq Carpenter, who's already been on the deck a couple of times tonight, getting tended to in the end zone. ESPN Thursday Night College Football is presented by Dave and Busters. Download the new Dave and Busters Fun app today. Bobby Dodd Stadium at historic Grant Field, the oldest stadium in college football. The original stairs are still underneath the current structure of the stadium. Georgia Tech leads by eight. First and goal, North Carolina State. Devin Leary, quarterback sneak. He's done this a couple of times tonight. This one's crucial. And he is going to be marked shy of the goal line. Second and goal for NC State. Sixth time in the red zone for the Wolfpack tonight. Two touchdowns. Kind of had a feeling this was coming. The tailback was nine yards deep. No indication that it was going to be a quick hitter from him, but Georgia Tech felt the same thing. They felt like the quarterback sneak was coming once again for the fourth time tonight. Coach Dorn very confused on how there wasn't caught a touchdown there. They're on the half yard line. Felt like they got a little bit of push. Here's some fun facts. NC State has had 48 runs. Georgia Tech has 49 total plays. I mean, that's ground and pound, if I've ever heard it. ball carry was stopped short of the goal line. Previous play is under further review. Dave Dorn wants this touchdown now. I'm going to say it's going to be hard to have indisputable video evidence. You can't yeah. scrum at the goal line. You yeah. can't dispute it. I mean, it's got to be indisputable. Not inconclusive. Not any of the other words. It has to be indisputable. 28-20, fourth quarter, half a yard movement, a lot of bodies. You can't see the ball. I don't know how you're going to overturn that. Uh, again, I don't think you can overturn it if you can't see where the football is exactly. Although, although maybe it's one of those things where you can't see where he is, but you can see where he isn't. Does that make sense? <laughs> well, I've this... heard that you can lose <laughs> games more than you can win. <laughs> yep, I think I see him right there, and that is not even close to a touchdown. 
That's indisputable. That's a pretty good uh, angle from our crew there. Yeah. The back side of it. They Leary trying to go over the top. It, it, let me ask you this, man. The ruling on the field stands. Second down. What's the best way at the goal line to run a quarterback sneak? Well, when they don't know that it's coming. Okay. A lot of times, and I say NC State's been one of the best teams at this over the years, they'll have a plan B. Like, if they're stacked in there, there's, there's four guys over the center, then you can get a play to the outside. This is the formation that they came back to last time when they went with the quarterback sneak, though. Except the quarterback was under center, and then the two upbacks kind of helped push him in. Bush push was made legal a few years back. You cannot pull a teammate into the end zone, but you can push from behind. If Devin Leary suddenly gets under center, I would expect the quarterback sneak. He'll hand it off to Person, who goes airborne, collided with as he heads past the goal line. And this is a two-point game with five minutes left. And this is one of those touchdowns where you don't want to celebrate too much. you got to get your focus ready because the biggest play of the night is the next play, the two-point conversion. They go here to the play to the tailback. Person goes over the top. I like that play call so much more. But this is the play call that really counts. Here we are. The entire night is built to this. 28-26, two-point conversion away from tie ball game in Atlanta. They had Emezi in the backfield. Now they motion him out. It's Person next to Leary. Rolling it. Throwing it back towards the near side. Incomplete. Georgia Tech still in the lead. How about Christian Campbell bringing some heat on Leary? Well, every team practices their two-point play all the time. They can't wait to unleash it. This is their first one of the year, so they've been waiting all year. They go with a pretend rollout to the right. If it's there, you take it. But, but really, really, you're just looking at those guys on the right. You'll take the gimme if you have it, but it's called a Houdini screen. You tell that tight end to hide, to just reappear out of nowhere on the other side of the field. But Leary doesn't have enough time to wait to get the ball off. I think it was Campbell that might have gotten there. And now, he, he's really the one that saved the two now, points. Now you see me, now you don't. Devin Leary takes a massive shot from Christian Campbell. I so, thought he had the out there, but oh, instead it was a delay to get the tight end open on the backside with that pressure in your face. It's hard to deliver it, Jeff. So let's think about this. Let's say the Wolfpack get a stop. You're down by two. We know about the kicker issues tonight as well. Christopher Dunn has made a couple field goals, but he has been banged up. So we'll have to see if it comes to that. They've got to get the stop first to Georgia Tech with an opportunity to salt some clock away and maybe finish as Jeff Collins was imploring his team to do earlier tonight. Finish the fight, he was saying at halftime. 28-26 now. You've been on a couple long drives. You have the ability to do so. Josh Blancato back there. He's going to take the knee. Yellow Jackets out to the 25-yard line. And for Georgia Tech, the win is more symbolic than anything else. Trying to get that third win, snap the losing streak, maybe build towards next year where they're going to have a difficult schedule. For North Carolina State, some major stakes right now. If they can come back and win this game, they set up an opportunity to, to go to a bowl game if they beat North Carolina next week at home. Yeah, and I would say major stakes for Georgia Tech as well. I mean, they've got a bunch of recruits tonight. Sure. December 18th is signing day. This is national television, ESPN, Thursday night football. This means a lot to these guys. You could tell Jeff Collins yesterday meeting with him. This game means a lot to him. He understands how to turn a program around, and he knows what this win would do for them. So they'll go to Mason, who's over 110 yards rushing tonight for a few here. He's got over 100 on the ground. Graham's got over 100 on the ground. Zonovan Knight for NC State has 100 yards. Jordan Houston closing in on 100 yards. This has been a physical game between these two tonight. Yeah, it's been a phenomenal, a phenomenal physical game tonight by both teams, and the offenses have been very good. Now we're in four-minute offense territory here, though, for Georgia Tech. Four-minute offense, just trying to drain as much time off the clock as possible so NC State doesn't get the ball back. The question is, and I, I kind of know the answer, are they going to go back to what their history has been with that option play, quarterback run play, Read here, give it to Mason. 
And now this is a huge third down coming up. You get a stop, you save some time, and you get the ball back. North Carolina State still has two timeouts. Georgia Tech has one. And I'd be shocked if it's not Mason and Graham. A heavy dose of Mason and Graham. Just that thing, that zone read, where either Mason pounds it up in there, or if they over-pursue it, they overplay him inside. Graham just keeps it like we've seen him do tonight. Third time he's gone over 100 yards rushing. He had a career high 141 in the overtime win against Miami. Over 100 yards on the road at Duke as well. And the only way you can stop it is if you pull your free safety from the middle of the field and bring him down to have the quarterback. That's what NC State's trying to do right now. Dave Dorn screaming to his defenders on the field. There's that option look and a first down for Graham. Seven yards when they needed him to move the chains. That's a blow to North Carolina State. Still time left, but that's going to take more off the clock. James Graham reads his pitch key. The guy plays the running back, takes it up the gut, picks up the first down. 3.30 left in the fourth quarter now. Jalen Scott was the edge man for North Carolina State there making the read. That ball came a little loose there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really impressed. Uh, Pat McAfee was listening when we sat down with Navy's coaches when they taught us the triple option. That's right. Read your pitch key. Well yeah. done, Pat. I think I could win a Heisman if I was in football right now. Would have to lose about 60 to 70 pounds. <laughs> but you run 21 miles an hour, Pat. That's all that matters. 22.8. <laughs> Back to Mason. They'll keep the clock moving. Oh, he breaks free for more yardage. What a second effort by Mason for eight yards. That looked like it was going to be a two-yard gain, and he pounded it for six more. The interesting thing there is Coach Dorn was going to call a timeout if he had got stopped short. Instead, he busts through, and they let the clock keep rolling. Power running there by Mason. Deshard Choice, running backs coach here for Georgia Tech, has done a great job with him. He used to be a Colt, was a Cowboy and a Bill. Happy birthday to him. They've been moving the ball on the ground here. 35th birthday for Tashar Choice yesterday. Of course, he started his career at Oklahoma. His mother fell ill, so he wanted to move back closer to home. Had a great career at Georgia Tech, played in the NFL, was at North Texas as an assistant the last two years. And he's coaching up these running backs, including Jordan Mason. That's a key stop by Peyton Wilson. But let's see where the spot is. That's a key stop and actually a nice catch by James Graham on that shotgun snap. That was not a great snap. Timeout, North Carolina State. That's their second timeout. 30-second timeout. NC State will use a timeout. Third and one coming up. That's a nice, wow, that was wide. And that was wide and 100 miles an hour. Whew. And a turnover in a four-minute situation would be devastating. Remember who's the center right now. William Lay the third is a walk-on who did not play the first two years of his career. He's now started seven straight games because Kenny Cooper suffered a hip injury against Temple. They've been without one of their tackles in Jahazel Lee this year. They've had to fill in with walk-ons at multiple spots on both lines. Yeah, but I'll say this about William Lay. He's a walk-on, but he's playing over scholarship players. Yeah. So sometimes we say, oh, he's a walk-on. Credit and a shout-out to this walk-on, but he is, he's played some really good football. He is a Burlesworth nominee, of course, for the top walk-on in college football. The first winner of it was Georgia Tech's Sean Bedford. He wore number 79 as well. He's in the radio booth with our buddy Andy Demetra. Of course. Nice. I ran into him today, actually. Nice guy. First down could essentially end the game here. Third down and one. It is Mason. Breaks free, and he's got the first down. Another second effort may have just helped seal the deal for the Yellow Jackets. Just a relentless run by Mason there. His team needed him. He gets stood up behind the first down marker, powers through it, picks up the first down now. Tick, tick, tick. NC State's got one timeout left. And you want to talk about effort and body blows. Jordan Mason, what a physical run to finish out this game. Adam, you said it essentially could finish the game. That was big. Play clock down to four when they snap it. Right back to Mason. Another break of the tackle. Another extra five or six. North Carolina State may have to use that last timeout. But... North Carolina State. That's their third and final timeout. North Carolina State, third and final timeout. But this one's pretty much over because of Mason, Pat. Well, 
Talking to Coach Collins yesterday, he talked about the strength and conditioning program, how important it was because they had such small bodies. So they had to put a lot of weight on the offensive line. They had to do all that. Mason doesn't look tired at all. He's been running people over. And this NC State defense has been riddled with injury, and they're tired, and it looks like Mason has that extra gear. Jordan Mason was in the doghouse of Jeff Collins early in the season because with the old coaching regime, <laughs> Jordan Mason would park in a certain spot. When Jeff Collins got the job, it turned out that parking spot was issued to Jeff Collins. So Jeff Collins shows up one day, and Jordan Mason's car is in his parking spot. Jeff Collins goes, no way. You're never doing that again. So he started the season in the doghouse, you know, proverbial doghouse. But he said he's developed into a leader, into a potential captain, and he has shown off some incredible effort tonight. And I also heard another story where he's showing off pregame where he comes out in some Ugg boots, no shirt, <laughs> carrying a sledgehammer <laughs> to get himself hyped for the game pregame. Congrats to Georgia Tech. How about this? First win since mid-October. They've had a four-game skid. They're going to snap a three-game skid now with this victory. Home game two. Primetime television before signing day here on December 18th. Got a lot of players in the building, recruits in the building. It's interesting to perceive Jeff Collins. You know, he's still a relatively new head coach. He has a pitch. He sells it. He sells it hard. He's an Atlanta guy. He's from Conyers right down the road, a suburb of Atlanta. But when you walk into his office and you listen to him talk, it's hard not to get caught up in the pitch. And I know every coach has one for every recruit and every transfer and every player that wants to find a spot. When you hear Jeff Collins talk about it, you can tell he is about it. And this was an impressive performance tonight by Georgia Tech. I think he took this time out so everybody could celebrate. Yeah. <laughs> there hasn't been much to celebrate. This is going to be win number three for Georgia Tech this year. And Jordan Mason is a big reason why. Ties his career high with 141 yards. Well, the physicality. And they said they were just going to feed him. Said, so, yeah, we want a pro-style attack. We're going to ask our quarterback to make some plays. We've got a great true freshman wide receiver. But Jordan Mason is the bell cow. He's going to get the ball, carry the load, and that's exactly what he did tonight. That physical brand of football really has defined this game. And Jordan Mason's been the guy doing it. And for the Georgia Tech fans here in the 404, this has to be a beautiful spark of optimism for the future. Jeff Collins is going to recruit, bring his guys in, but to get this ACC win against a team that was trying to be bowl eligible is huge. And from North Carolina State, they will see their bowl hopes for the time being dashed with a loss tonight. Victory formation. Jeff Collins gets to celebrate with the rest of the crew with their first win since October the 19th. Their third of the season in the first year under Jeff Collins. And for the NC State team, the future is also bright. They're very young. Yep. Tonight, though, Georgia Tech just showed up all four quarters, all three phases. Not more you can ask for if you're a Yellow Jacket fan. I would just add, as Pat McAfee likes, likes to say, they showed up and showed out. That's what we're looking for. And that's what Jeff Collins is going to celebrate. 28-26, the final score. Georgia Tech comes away with the win. Sports Center is coming up next as well. For Molly McGrath, Pat McAfee, Matt Hasselbeck, and the great women and men of our crew, Adam Amin, sing so long. But before we go, Jason Rickle, our outstanding graphics operator, is in the hospital tonight. We love you, buddy. We're hoping you're getting better. We're wishing the best for you and your family. Get better, JR. Thanks, brother. Impressive celebration for Georgia Tech following an impressive two-point win. A key one for the future.